I went to the the movie today with um, Lee, our former guest Lee, and Mr. Lee. Oops. Whoa. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey. Oh my God. What's happening? It's the purge. It's the purge is happening. <laughs> It's an alarm I had set on my phone that, like, on the weekends, I'm usually putting little Veronica down on Saturday and Sunday. So I have an alarm on my phone to wake me up because case I Attention fall citizens, we are enacting the National Purge. I'm so oh. sorry. Hi, I'm Ray. And I'm Veronica. And welcome to the Chick Lit Book Club podcast, where we read a romance novel and then we talk about it. Today we're talking about Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. Hmm. Your enunciation was stellar there. Thank you. I've been having a problem saying that our, the name of our podcast, you know, it's going on four years now. Um, but- yeah, we, we did that to ourselves. Yeah, um, just for anybody, a little Easter egg in uh, the latest review of Miss Girl and the Duke. I have a hard time, hard time saying uh, CLBC's name. It's uh, pretty funny. Yeah. I have to say, in, over, in general, review is pretty funny. Uh, I, I mean, mean you're I a funny person. So. so, I mean, I try. I try. Um, it's a nice night tonight. Is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay. it's not because we've we've had some like fucking issues tonight, but mm-hmm. it's a good night. It's a good book. It's a good night. Yeah, we got some mm-hmm. fun things to talk about tonight. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, well, when we get to the review, we should then tell the listeners. I mean, you all want to become a Patreon so you can see our beautiful faces and see what our names are on Riverside, but. We'll get to that when we get to our book, but we got some pretty ingenious names listed today. I thought so. I thought so. I don't usually come mm-hmm. up with a fun name, but I did tonight. You inspired and me. And it's... Oh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Veronica. Yeah. Hey, Vanessa. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long time. It has um, been a long time. Vanessa Carlton. Yes. Tell me something good. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> That's been a long time since that. Since anyone uh-huh. accidentally called me Vanessa. I love that. Okay. So uh, it has not been a, a great week. However, uh-huh. uh, two things have happened since the last time we recorded, at least. Last Friday... So not yesterday, but the Friday before, I finished writing my second book. Yay! And I started editing on Monday, and it's going well thus far, I think. So um, I'm really excited. Still on track to get it to the editor by the end of the month. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ray can attest <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. little dirtier this time. Um, and I'm not uh, sorry. He- yeah, 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 it is, it is, it, it, it uh, can attest. Yep. Not sorry. Fact checked. Ew. So, uh, part two, and I just found out this t- today, I have not even told you this. I, earlier in the week, was looking through, like, book signing events and stuff like that, and it's just, like, one of the ones that some of my author friends are going to is literally October 2025, and what? I saw that the authors had been announced and I was like, what the hell? And so I was telling my friends, like, I 2024 is out. Like, everything this year will be closed. But, like, yeah. you know, I think in 2025 I should start doing that stuff. And one of them was like, oh, try, like, whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're, that's already, like, already booked. booked. Not, they are not accepting anyone else. Um, and one of them DM'd me and was like, try this one. It's later this year. And I think they're still accepting people. So I filled out the form. I was like, whatever. Like, you know, no harm, no foul. Well, today the lady who runs it emailed me and was like, Hey, you're in. I sent you an invoice (gasps) via PayPal. And I was like, nice. Okay. Is it local or where's it at? 
Uh, it's in Lexington, Kentucky, which is actually not mm. that far. Not too I mean, far. It's not that bad. Um, and it's only like a one day deal. So it's really nice. um, like a good first one to do. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I can like talk about it, the name of it yet. So I won't say anything. But um, I will be doing that. And I'm super excited. That's It'll be exciting. Like, my first yeah. like book convention thingy, you know, like. I'm do so you excited. need someone to help you? Uh, I don't know. Now, uh, we can talk off off the air about it. Right. Logistics and things. Yeah, yes. we can talk about that later. Okay. I'm so excited. I'm excited for you. <sighs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, not great personal week. However, uh, decent author week. Um, oh. Yeah. Ray. Uh-huh. Tell me something good. I actually had a decent week. Good. Mostly because I wasn't at work. <laughs> Kidding. I mean, I was, but... Yeah, those snow days were part of why my week was so fucking awful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Ohio. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, one thing that was awesome is that I decided to, like, redecorate uh, my room uh, and get rid of these two dressers I've had for a while um, trying to donate them to Habitat. I got this brand new dresser. I had to put it together because I I don't I, I don't have baller money where someone just moves in furniture. It's all put together. Fuck that. I don't got that baller money. Nope. Um, I still have to put things together. Um, but it's like short and like long. <laughs> it's girthy, but not <laughs> but not tall. Uh, it doesn't have the height. Um, so more places for Sherman to like sit on and knock shit off. So perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited. So I got some new curtains. They don't necessarily go with it because didn't really thought that was going to match the bedspread. But when I, my, my duvet cover, but when it came, doesn't so much. I don't fuck at this point. I don't fucking care. It's artistic license. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm, I'm excited. Like things are coming together. It's certain look good. I'm liking it. I got some lights up in the kitchen they look really nice up on the top of my cabinet. So I've got some like recessed lighting put up. It's pretty Love great. Love that. Love that. Then the last two days I've gone to the movie theaters and have a fucking ball both times I went. So uh, last night I uh, went with Ween and we went to see Founder's Day, which was awful. But we had the whole fucking movie theater to ourselves. So we were just sitting there going, what the fuck is happening? It was great. <laughs> How out long loud. has that movie been out? That was, I think, opening day yesterday. Oh, that's not a good yeah, sign. No one knows There's about this movie. No and no one should know about this movie. Although I just listened to the soundtrack today and it's fucking baller. Okay. Only good thing okay. about the movie. Then today, the reason I was... I, I held this story off <laughs> because there's something funny that happens that... Two things that happen. Okay, so first is I went to the, the movie today with um, Lee, our former guest Lee, and Mr. Lee. Oops. Whoa. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey, oh my god, what's happening? It's the purge. It's the purge is happening. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's an alarm I had set on my phone that, like, on the weekends, I'm usually putting little Veronica down on Saturday and Sunday. So I have an alarm on my phone to wake me up because I'm Attention, I citizens. We are enacting the national purge. I'm uh. so sorry. <laughs> that was funny. That's literally the sound that they do at the Haunted House restaurant. Oh, when they do the purge thing anyhow so uh, we went to go see all of us strangers today and the w- first thing that happens 10 minutes so if you've not seen the movie uh andrew scott who most people will know him as this dirty priest that uh from uh fleabag who uh what's her face has sex with in the second season i think oh yeah, uh, I think like, or sexy priest, hot priest, or I don't know because he's got a dirty mouth. I don't know. Whatever, he's hot. Okay. He, I know him as Moriarty from Yes, uh, B yes. Batches, That's, B mm-hmm. Batches, Sherlock from Sherlock. Right. Love Andrew Scott, love him, but yes. he plays the lead character in here. And um, uh, huh. it's okay. So first thing, okay, I'll just <laughs> tell you the first thing. So. It's really fucking sad. Like, it's really fucking sad. Oh, Ten minutes in. Did you pick this my... movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are not allowed to pick movies anymore. Do you remember I how you that... tell me that I, I... pick sad books? 
Yeah, yeah. You can't I, pick movies. I don't. I didn't know it was gonna be like this. Okay, yeah, so, that and Iron Claw. Like, let's just go see these movies. Where you fucking cry in the movie theater. So, ten minutes in, God. my one eye contact pops out like, because I'm having some issues with my eyes, and it just is like it's gone, it's gone. So the rest of the movie, I can only see kind of out of the one eye. Oh my god! And. And then so this one's just leaking. My left eye's just leaking because it's just dry and awful. Left and eye, Don't right? ever get. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I didn't burn anything down though. Um, <laughs> no one under just, the age of thirty has any idea what we're talking about. No, nope, <laughs> no. Nope. Um, but so this was, and then so the other one just starts leaking because of crying because it's emotional. And ten minutes to the fucking end of the movie, <laughs> the movie just stops. <gasps> black screen and i just turned to lee and i go i'm a bad luck charm when it comes to movies i just wanted to let you know that because it would be the fourth movie this year that uh the screening has stopped that i've been at (laughs) the fourth Uh wait this year it's january well i mean like since, since last january yes okay okay i was like wow in a in (laughs) an entire year four I mean, th- not great odds, you know? Like, what are the right. odds that that would happen to you that many times? Right. I think... Wow. The only, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it was funny, but uh, luckily they got us together and finished the rest of the movie. But it was uh, sad. But I did I did tell Lee, I go, Veronica would tell me I'm not allowed to pick movies anymore. Uh-uh. Not anymore. Yeah, so, anyhow, fantastic movie. What's I said we were either going to... Uh, uh, all of us strangers. Uh, I said we were either going to see it now or next month because oh, I, sure. I don't know. Although it's on a it's 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 on like lists now to be like snubbed by the Academy, which I blows my mind since it has like a ninety nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. Oh, Claire and it's Foy beautiful. It. Who is Claire Foy? Claire Foy. Mm-hmm. Um, I will not. I su- saw them doing like something or other like interviews that these two so they must have been promoting this movie i just didn't know it at the time yeah i am not going to spoil it because me telling you who, who she plays spoils it so okay gotcha. um it's but it's very 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 good oh and the and who all's in it paul mescal who i used not too long ago as stunt casting um oh, yes yeah so but it's Ugh. definitely a, did you ever um, find about out like how the movie ends. Oh yeah, it came back on. It came back oh, okay. on. We finished okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The, and then there was like there's a there's a huge twist ending too. So okay, um, which would have been wanna... great. <laughs> um, just you know, like under like I'm looking at the IMDb IMDb mm-hmm. thing. Um, more like this. Iron Claw is listed there. <laughs> Well, because I think it's because it's an Oscar. Like it's, it's. I mean, Iron Claw. Unfortunately, I don't think is going to be considered. But all of us strangers might be. Like right now, I'm I'm confused. There's a whole list I saw of like uh, they're like pretty solid predictions, and Maestro's on there. Like Maestro has like a 78 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't understand you know, how that could be. That's like not. It's just. I. I I feel like the movie Poor Things would be another one that would be nominated, even like because it doesn't yeah, seem that to make any sense. Yeah, that one's on the list. It still has like it's up in the nineties though. Still though, I I'm very confused by it. But we can talk about that later because you know I love Emma Stone and Mark Ruffalo. But like well, every and they have, single they bang trailer a lot in that movie, every yeah. trailer I see, I'm like I don't understand what's happening here. But yeah, but but we'll probably be seeing that next month. So okay. Because it will be, I'm sure, on the short list. Yeah. Yeah. I am sure. Oppenheimer and Barbie. I think those are the ones that are are definite. I don't want to see Oppenheimer. I'm sorry. I just, I cannot. I I will see it, even though I I cannot sit through it. I'm sorry. I think he's already seen it, possibly. Okay. Um, Well, it's also we can see that at home and for free. Yeah. I think it's on HBO. Okay. Well, it's for free for me, I guess. It's not for free for you. <laughs> Since what do you mean it's not free for me? Because <laughs> you pay for it. Yeah, that's true. It's true. I did see that you chose um, an avatar for your profile, though. 
What did I pick? On Max, it's Pedro uh, Pascal. Oh, of course it is. Fucking, of course it is. Yeah. Mine oh, is and guess weird what, guys? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, and mm-hmm. FYI, I don't have to burn Hollywood down. So thank you very much because uh, Nick Offerman won his Emmy. So yeah, yeah. I don't have to burn everything down. I love Nick Offerman. Okay. Yep. Anywho, uh, we've right. gone a little off the rails. Were you we done have. with your bright spots or no? Oh fuck yes, yes. Because I yes, don't want to yes. cut you off, my love. Oh, you cut me off. Just bring the like the hook out. I'm done. The cane, just like. Yup, yup. Just like on like you know, those shows. Old I can't remember talkies or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. So we have a segment on this show. Would you like to we talk about it? Do I would love to tell you about it. So um, we have this segment on the show. Welcome to our most. I don't know, like our newest segment, I guess. Although we've been doing it for a bit now. Mm-hmm. During this segment, entitled "Toys for Twats." Uh, Ray finds, like, unusual, perhaps, um, sex toys uh, to or, show yeah. me. What or, did I like, say to you earlier? I just show you penises. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm looking. I think you said something like I'm looking for penises or weird penises or something like that. <laughs> I was like, excellent. Can't wait. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, anyway, as a, this is our general disclaimer when we go into this segment no one here is trying to kink shame anyone okay no one is worried or cares about what you do in the privacy of your own home you do you good for you not for us maybe um the only thing that we care about is that you are being safe and that all parties are being consensual so um with that we're not trying to judge anyone. Ray, please take it away. I'm terrified. The first um, item on this delicious dish is... Oh, God. Oh, come on. Is a silicone penis pipe for smoking. It's a glass bowl for tobacco pipe, dick and cock pipe from Etsy for only $16. You can get it in a plethora of colors. Um, what I love is there's a, there's a flaming hot there's a flaming hot Cheeto red one. Um, Why is this a is a dick and cock pipe. I don't know. I think they had to say dick and ball possibly, but they're like, yeah, it actually looks like a telephone. The end of it looks like cuz it's got like looks like four holes like for, oh, you know, yeah, a you're pipe. Right. It kind of does, yeah. But um, yeah. So what I love here is there's a video. I was going to ask you to play the video because I need to understand how you smoke this thing. But there, no one smokes it. No one is going to put that thing up to their mouth, which I'm like, and we don't even get to see the tip, which I'm assuming is where the hole is, like the penis hole. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you? You'd have to like. That's what you're you're sucking on, right? Oh wait, here we go. Yeah, there's the hole. Yeah, so like you're sucking on that. It looks like you're. He looks like you're down in a cock. The it's fine. A, yeah, I mean. Yeah, you're. <laughs> on the end of a cock. Right. Um. So I mean, for sixteen bucks, if this is your thing, and, um, you know, if you love cocks, this is this is a thing for you. I mean, the features of the dick pipe. <laughs> it's my hash pipe um but dick pipe does it say it like you oh detachable glass bowl so you can clean it that's pretty cool that's that's good because oh, i would assume you could just throw that throw that bitch right in the micro or microwave well that too washing <laughs> the dishwasher dishwasher uh-huh um uh wow uh, um it does say what? you know perfect pipe to um smoke if you want to feel something girthy in your mouth uh-huh. Oh, okay. Do you want me to do the David Attenborough? Mm. <clears throat> Please do. This penis pipe is the perfect pipe to smoke tobacco and feel something nice and girthy in your mouth at the same time. This cock pipe has a very realistic design and extremely detailed veins and textured balls to hold on to while you smoke. This pipe... <laughs> Cock smoker. This pipe is made from high quality silicone and features a removable glass bowl, making it super convenient to clean. 
Um, it's okay. four and a half inches long. Um, it, so not I should say that. No, I should also say I watched a video uh, today or not today, a couple a couple days ago, where it was a bunch of guys who were um, trying to guess like who's like their sizes, like from smallest to largest without like getting measured. And then they got measured. Um, <clears throat> the smallest on the list was four four point five, I believe. Oh, OK. So. <clears throat> Um, and the largest was, I think, seven. Oh, no, okay. eight. It was eight, eight inches. So, <clears throat> seems um, like a handy dandy um, thing. If you like yeah. them four point fives, you're good. <sighs> um, uh, if I know you have not read the third installment of Becca Max hockey series, um, uh-huh. but I, and you may not remember this being like a kind of long-standing joke where like Carter thinks that he he like clearly he thinks he has the biggest dick out of everyone on the hockey team uh-huh well um they decide because they're weirdos that um they are going to just lay in the snow naked so that they can have a dick uh-huh. measuring contest in the snow and um Carter's is not the longest Adams is though by a half an inch so this video, interestingly enough, they measured the gentleman with a soft penis, with a hard penis, and then um, then they did like circumference to like a- around the girth of it, and then they also then <laughs> um, so they did like they they had them all set up like by flaccid penis, and that would and then they did it then by hard penis and they moved them around by like because some people were growers sure. um but but still 4.5 as flaccid is not bad like no no and so they also then brought out all of like cucumbers at the same size and shape of their penis it was pretty funny i liked it and the guys actually were pretty spot on with like trying to like gauge just from their talking with one another like where they were and they were actually pretty wow. pretty spot on, mm-hmm. and it got like where it was is this video? Really interesting. I got, like I'll what find you... it. I'll... I'll How find. did they know? It was, a, it, it was a, well, I, I saw it because it was a you. YouTube commentator who's what they were watching it and they were guessing before they started like really like f- trying to figure out who they thought were going to be the biggest ones, and honestly. Neither of theirs were, but like the one guy I picked, I was like, that dude's got a big schlong. And uh, I was right. So there we go. Any hoozles. Right. So that's that. Um, all right. So second up. Buttercup. All right. I, I, I can't really give you any warning on this one. It's just going to come into your face. Balls. Come into your eyeballs. Oh, so just get ready for it. Nothing pr- can ever prepare me for this, by the way. <laughs> this is full frontal daddy, captivating, fully erect art print, uncensored digital art. Um, it's just a, a, a painting of a man with a, a cur- like curving up. Like that thing uh-huh. is coming for you, dick. It's big. It it's bigger than a f- it's about six, six inches, maybe. I would say the length is difficult to determine because of just the angle that you're at, but it's very girthy. Yeah, it's it will wreck your bottom. Um, Because the only reason I say that is because it is like there's a lot of daddy, full frontal hung erect daddy, beautiful male digital art print. Um, Wow. Oh, amazing product. The wife will love this. I mean, it's only five dollars and eight. Purchased item, Padam Kylie Minogue. That's like a, that's not a review for this item. Oh, Also, okay. this thing is not small. It's 27 inches by 40 inches. <laughs> it's a big, giant fucking, but it's only $5.80. It's 5% well, it's it's off sale. Well, because it's a digital, it's a digital download. You so gotta print it. Like, that's right. Right. Yeah, you gotta print it. Which, if you got a printer that'll print that, good, good luck. Um, yeah, so. It's fascinating. Oh, but the, yeah, here's some other pictures. You can find some other just I mean, it's just naked pictures of men. Um um Oh, okay. Um 
all right, we don't need to see that one. It's just a guy with taking a picture with a, a, a can. Oh, his dick is in a bar, jar of peanut butter. Okay, cool. Oh, so, God. yeah, there's that. Um, this is Lisa's art. Somebody has painted it. So I'll give him that. Yeah. That'd be a fun paint by numbers now, wouldn't it? Oh, my God. The um, seller is World of Warlock. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, five percent yep. off sale yep. ends on January twenty second. So, yep. I mean, he's got fifty one items. A lot of spice, Spice Girls. A lot of sp- and Madonna. Man, oh here we go. Mature. I love sucking cock. It's a shirt, and it says, "I love sucking cock and Britney Spears." Not yeah. together, just like ex- not just exclusively in general. In general, in general. Okay, cool. So there's cool. that. I mean, just know that's probably what you're going to get for your birthday. Um, Great. <laughs> frame them. I'm going to frame it. I'm going to mm-hmm. print it out at work. Perfect. So I you left the lab. have the... a job for years to come. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, what if I cut the penis off and then we'd play, we'd pin the penis on the, <laughs> on the man. Every right. bachelorette party's dream. Oh, God. Someone shoot me. Anyhow, uh, last one. Save the best for last. This is... Jerk off Jerry! <laughs> this is Jerk off Jerry. Jerk off Jerry toy. It's, uh, it's a guy. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a toy of a, a gentleman. Um, just jerk it off. That they blur um, out? Why? There you go. Oh, Wow. Why is his other arm it's a, in the air? I think because it's it's hiding where the the <laughs> the little the twist thing is. This thing's uh. ten bucks. Um, oh, I like that. It's okay. Oh my god, you so, can select the hair color. Oh, Jerry nice. hair Let's color. See. Oh, red hair or black? We can't. Um, oh wait, maybe one of the ones has a black hair, so we can see what it looks like. Jerry no, it's uh, all. is right There we are. Wow. Yep. Yep. I like the video showing him jerking off. Yep. Wow. Um it's a bachelorette favor. Um yeah. super funny jerk off Jerry moving toy. Each purchase for one is for one Jerry in his adorable box. It's just a box that just says jerk yeah, off Jerry on it. Yeah. It actually looks like a box you get like you know an actual toy yeah like like um mm-hmm. right uh like a, you know you know what I'm saying um due to the it's nature so of this item so interesting to me how that photo where they show the box is all kinds of blurred out but like there's an yeah. actual video of it showing yeah like we, c- yeah yeah but I mean this is the front this is the front and I love that it's a bestseller um mm. <clears throat> due to the nature of this item we do not accept returns or exchanges if you have any questions please reach us reach out to us oh oh here we go this this one is actually recommends this item this guy is great such a funny gift and I like the Ken like box that's where I was getting at it looks very much like Barbie it's a Barbie font on the front I'm of it. just Ken um it is currently <laughs> in 20 plus cards so I wonder how true that is. <clears throat> I mean, if I order it, I can get it by the twenty third. So pretty that's fast shipping, it. man. It is. Um, wh- I mean, what do you do with it after the novelty wears off? You're like, look at that, and then you get this piece of plastic that I'm. What? Uh, could you? Okay. Yep. There you go. Jerk off, Jerry. I mean, poor guy's named Jerry. How many? Yeah. So there is, uh, there's our um, twist for twat segment. Fun, fun, yep. fun, fun. All right, so we're gonna take a break. Right. We're gonna come back. I'm gonna talk about done and dusted. <laughs> take a brief <laughs> rest. Bye. We'll be right back. We'll be back. We'll back in two and two. And we're back. We're back, bitches. <laughs> All righty. Um, we are here tonight to discuss mm-hmm. Done and Dusted, a Rebel Blue Ranch novel by Lila Sage. Yep. 
I love this cover. <laughs> you are in that microphone. <laughs> oh my god. Um, sorry, it's so it's too close to my face. I'm molesting the microphone. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is the first in a series. Um, this book kind of like went viral on TikTok. Um, and therefore I was hesitant because sometimes when things go viral on any platform, whether it's Instagram or TikTok, it's like, you know, really oh, like though? the lady you know? eating a eating a mouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are gross, disgusting. Um Thank you, but TikTok. at any rate, this book came out um, in June, June 6th, 2023. Um, mm-hmm. This is, let me double check <clears throat> this, but um, yes, this is Lila Sage's very first book. Wow. Which makes me angry slash <laughs> happy for her. Um yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. This book is very good. <laughs> it's, it's very good. It's very good. It's very well done. Um, yeah. And it's a fucking bestseller. And she has been a novelist. She's been uh, an author for seven months. I'm so happy for her. Not at all jealous. Um, I think I honestly, mm-hmm. this is just conjecture, but I think part of it is that fucking ca- a cover because she took it. She took a chance, and with that, that cover is different. It's cover very is different, different from yes, for sure. Also, I mean, she has a publisher. Like this is a traditionally published book, which, for how hot it is, is shocking. Well, I mean, we'll we'll talk about one book. I'm going to talk about one book that I read that it's tradi- well, sort of traditional published, but it's been every fucking where. And it was explicit as fuck. Okay, okay. Um, the uh, this is this is published by um, the Dial Press, which is an imprint of. God damn it! I re- oh, it's in the book. Um, it's like an imprint of a huge. Uh, an imprint of Random House. So you know. Mm-hmm. They've got, like, the power behind it also, you know? Yeah. Um, any rate, uh, and deserved. Like, this book is great. It's not, Yeah. you know, they're not, like, pushing crap here. It's a really great book. Um, okay. Here is the blurb for Done and Dusted. For the first time in her life, Clementine Emmy Ryder has no idea what she's doing. She's accomplished everything on her to-do list. She left her small hometown of Meadowlark, Wyoming, went to college, and made a career for herself by doing her favorite thing, riding horses. But after an accident makes it impossible for her to get back into the saddle, she has no choice but to return to the hometown she always wanted to escape. Luke Brooks is Meadowlark's most notorious bad boy, bar owner, and bachelor. He's also the unofficial fifth member of the Ryder family. As Emmy's older brother's best friend, Luke spent most of his childhood antagonizing her. It's been years since he's seen her, but when she walks into his bar and back into his life, he can't take his eyes off her. Despite his better judgment, he wants to do a whole lot more than just look at her. Emmy's got too much on her mind to think about romance, and Luke knows he should stay away from his best friend's younger sister. But what if Luke is just what Emmy needs to get her spark back? Or will they both go up in flames? <sighs> mhm. That's a I mean a pretty good synopsis. Yeah. Yeah, I mean yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um Yeah. Do you have anything else to add to it or um I don't think so. I mean <clears throat> Well, no, it doesn't say why she's home. So I guess we can say why she's home because we. It says she got into an accident, but like it doesn't say what happened. So she gets thrown pretty hard from a horse, Mm -hmm. not her own horse; it's a different horse. Um, But she gets thrown like into a fence Mm -hmm. and hits her head pretty hard. In fact, at one point she says, "I there was blood in my eyes." Yeah, she woke up with blood in her eyes. It's very. 
And it's very reminiscent about how her mother died. So yes. she is like very scared to get back on a horse. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is the impetus for her coming back to Meadowlark. And she's, I think, well, and she's also just kind of ready. She's ready to be done with the circuit. As she says, she's one of the oldest riders in the circuit. So Mind she's you, ready she's to like come 27. Home. Which makes sense because it's like a jockey. So you want to have someone lithe and like thin and little to ride. And so not afraid. It's not and not afraid. Someone who's like who is agile, who can if like they're going to try to throw you it's almost like they're bendy. <laughs> they're yeah, they're bendy. Like, it's I mean it's very much like yeah. gymnasts. Like you have kind of a shelf life yeah. where your career yeah. can can last for as long as your body can take like this very intense thing. And which, that's why they moved like the the age level down to 16 for gymnasts because they're like make their careers we're cutting last into like Exactly. Like we're talking like <clears throat> six. We're talking about ten years, pretty much for gymnasts. So I'm assuming in in like Jackie's ten years is a long but time too. To keep them? Like really, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, but if you look at like um, if you look at uh, uh, barrel riders in particular, because she's a barrel rider, mm-hmm. um, yeah, they're for the most part. Like although I have to say, um, I did see ones that were 29. 30 but they're not right run- like they, they also if you look at their stats they have like 59 titles to their name yeah, because they've been yeah, riding yeah. for so long so this is like the end of their end of uh, their career yeah so this is where she's like you know i'm 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 ready to come home and um like she's and i think what i like about it is that she comes home and she's not well i guess we can get into pros and cons with that so why don't we just i think that's <clears> probably <throat> enough and luke luke has like um a pretty rough past like his he is the child and again very early on we learn this he is the he is the illegitimate child of his mother having an affair um and the fa- and his father didn't want him and his mother Neither really his didn't mom. want like, him <laughs> his parents yeah. sucked and yeah so like he had a pretty bad upbringing and as soon as he could he kind of like moved in and, and not by choice. Like, it just happened to be, like, Gus made friends with him. Because mm-hmm. it yeah. sounded like Gus was older than him. Right. Because I think it said at one point, uh, Luke is between Wes and Gus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. August. Which I, again, we've, we, uh, there's, it's the second August we've had on this fucking show. I fucking love the name August. I I do, too. I love it. Well, because Wes is Weston. So, I love, yeah. I mean, just, those are just great names. And, and I loved Emmy and for Clementine. Like, I loved all I of their too. names. I thought it was so yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also like Teddy for Theodora. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I loved Theodora. And I loved the. Yeah. Okay. So te- just because we're just throwing out names now. Um, Weston and, yeah, we're just like, and August and uh, Clementine are all siblings. Um, Emmy is the youngest. Yep. Uh, August is the oldest. Weston's in the middle. Um, Teddy is her best friend. Her full name is Theodora, but no one calls her that. Um, but her, no, someone calls her that. Yes, Gus does Gus call her that, her that when he's irritated with her. Um, yep. but her dad has Hank. her name tattooed on his fucking fingers. So one side says Theo, and the other side says Dora. And her dad is like an ex, like like um, rock star, ba- a drummer. Yeah, yeah, like literally, legit, knocked up some woman, mm-hmm. and she showed up t- ten months later yep. with a baby mm-hmm. and left it with him. And he's like, "Rock on!" and just took this baby and settled down oh. in the fr- like. It seems to be like a meadowlark is a place where everyone just kind of settles ex- down. Like yeah. they end up stopping because I was trying to think of like because you because I think in the book they say there's could be four books. Yes. And so we know the next one's going to be, because we know this, is Weston and Ada. Mm-hmm. And then one after that is going to be Theo and Gus. And I was like, well, who's the I fourth assume. book? And I'm wondering, it's going to be a prequel. And it might be Stella and Amos. I think that'll probably kill me. Yeah. Or it could but be I was Amos, thinking, like, like, who else could on, it be? like, meeting someone else. That's the other thought, too. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, but I can't see Amos moving on. Yeah. I really can't. But it, who knows? It could be either way. I mean, because I, I was thinking, who else Amos. could it be? Unless, 
I love pretty much all of the characters in this book. I even like stupid what's his face Wyatt, uh, Kenny Wyatt, Kevin, Kenny, Kenny Wyatt. He seems like a night like a sweet kid, like a sweet guy, like just yeah. He like, seems like he was dumb when he was younger, somebody. and she's like, and he's older now, and is you know whatever. Yeah, and like when she tells him she's seen somebody, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I did not know. Very, very yeah. polite and nice, and like there's only like the the trashy people who happen to be like Luke's family that are like. <laughs> But you know what? Okay, so why don't we get into like some pr- yeah, pros sure, and cons? Because um, I have some things like, I want to talk about. I want to talk about this. Uh, would you like to tell our beautiful listeners how we rate, yes. rate or how we how we review things on this podcast? Yes. Okay. So how we review things. <laughs> is we do a compliment sandwich so the top bun is something we liked about the book um then we move on to the meat so it's something we didn't care for as much and then we like to end on a high note so then we bring that back uh, another pro it doesn't really matter like because the top and the bottom bun are both pretty thick so it doesn't <laughs> have to be like one's you know better than the other one. Oh yeah no but, um no for sure you like to give me a pro or do you want me to start uh, we didn't talk about this beforehand i'm wondering if we are going to be sharing a bun at some point but i'm i'm happy Possibly. I, i'll go first because i re- okay. i really appreciated this about this book so okay go for it um literally the first thing that i highlighted in this book was um the author's note at the beginning like before the book even begins she says um I know being diagnosed with ADHD looks different for all of us, Mm. but if you've ever had a hard time explaining why you leave literally everything until the last minute, why you feel out of control, why your tongue feels like it doesn't belong in your mouth when the music is too loud, or any of the countless other things we feel that are a part of ADHD, you might see yourself in Done and Dusted. So something personally in my life that I have in the last couple of years begun to realize about myself is that there is like basically no possible way I'm not ADHD. Um, I've read a lot about how girls mask better and that means Mm -hmm. that they don't get diagnosed when they should. A lot Mm -hmm. of women, like especially in my age bracket, like in their 30s right now, are being diagnosed with ADHD because we know Mm -hmm. more about it now. We understand more about what it looks like now because like very stereotypically, we pictured boys just like running around like mad people, right? Like that's Mm – and and not doing well in school. And people – even like when I brought this up with like my own therapist – she was like well you always do well in school and I was like yeah but like there are so many other symptoms like yes I did do well in school because I was overcompensating maybe like Mm -hmm. any number of reasons that I could have been doing really well in school and I mostly with school and work am organized but like there are a lot of other symptoms that we're really overlooking here so yeah go ahead Oh, say uh, I have a loved one who was just who was diagnosed in the last five years. Um, oh yeah, and she she takes Adderall, um, and she has it so bad to the late point like like reading a book is just not for her, and that's like, going growing up like through school was never um, was never for her because it just wasn't. She just and she used to like pick at her face and mm. things like that. And when you talk with her, it's very much like she will commandeer the conversation. And I asked somebody else who has that. I'm like, not who, who, who I said, is this some, is this something? Because it would frustrate me. And then I realized this, like, I I asked and they're like, no, that's, that's, that's the ADHD. I'm like, oh, okay. Then like, it's part of me coming to be like, this person has, has a disease or has a, you know, has their brain works differently differently yes and um and so i need to readjust how i think sure. um and co- and like try to like um yeah it was just it was me going okay how how am i i have to look at this conversation a little bit differently and i have to like readjust yeah um so um but yes it's very much like in looking back 
um we're all kind of like really but i'm like no no for reals it makes complete fucking sense now looking back at this person growing up yeah yeah um and i it's very much like um like any other kind of i don't i don't know what to call it but like any kind of thing where you don't that's like outside of the norm where it manifests differently Mm -hmm. for different people and certain people have symptoms and experience adhd in a way that others don't um Mm -hmm. and again for women i think it's been so much harder to pinpoint those things because we aren't necessarily running around like mad people like we or if we are it's in a different way um yeah uh, yeah we're not just like running around unable to focus on anything no but i think it does also plays a big part in anxiety too um they kind of go hand in hand so Mm -hmm. i apologize i didn't mean to say disease i just couldn't couldn't figure out the word that i was trying to say in my brain no i mean it's often like lumped into just being like neuro um Divergent. Neurodivergent, mm-hmm. thank you. Which um, it is. Or as they might say on um, TikTok, neurospicy, which I really enjoy. Um, okay, so this is almost halfway through the book. Um, she is telling, uh, Emmy is telling Luke that she uh, has been diagnosed with ADHD a few years ago. I've always felt like, I've been doing a million things at once, and I felt like I had to give all of those things all of my attention. I thought about the way being diagnosed had changed things for me. All of a sudden, I could explain why I did things the way I did. It was a revelation for me. It had made things different, but not in a way I expected. I'd hoped the diagnosis would be a fix-all, that I would no longer feel so desperate to be in complete control all of the time. And that I would stop making impulsive decisions based on the fact that it made me feel like I was in charge of my own life for a minute. That didn't happen. Instead, I would know I would kind of know why I was doing something, but I wouldn't be able to stop myself from doing it. I kept on doing too many things and fixating on the things that made me feel like I had power. And holy shit, Batman. I was like, yeah. that. <laughs> that is me. Um, I wrote a note. I said, yes, yes, yes. Um, On page 212, I made a note that says, uh, this is my ADHD experience. Uh, Not exactly, like it doesn't manifest this exact way, but the concept is it, spot on. Um, She's talking about how she doesn't like touching um, like raw chicken. Mm -hmm. The sensory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Touching it made my gums feel weird. It didn't make any sense to anyone but me, but Teddy had never pushed it. Being an adult with sensory issues was a weird thing. How could I tell someone that if I touched a piece of chicken while the music was too loud and I could hear somebody breathing, it would send me into a spiral? Audio, like loud things, are a significant sensory problem for me. And if, like, if I am, like, auditorially overloaded, like, I get angry. And I'm just like, everyone has to, st- like, please stop. Like, I'm I have same, to get myself out of that situation. Um, mm-hmm. I did not realize that that's, like, such an ADHD thing. Um, or at least that is one of the ways that ADHD can be, um, can, manifest can manifest in people. Mm-hmm. Um, also, something, the other thing that um, that they had mentioned, and this is a thing that, I have, I, I sleep hard. It's hard for me to fall asleep. But once I get there, man, it's difficult mm-hmm. to wake me up. When I was a kid, something like my bedroom in the house that I mostly grew up in um, was on the end of the house. The driveway was like right after like a little bit of grass and then the driveway. And beyond the driveway were a shit ton of trees. And one of those trees one day fell over in a storm and yanked like the electrical lines off of the house very close to where my room was like we're talking on the (laughs) same wall where my room was yeah did i wake up i surely did not and a couple years later i was visiting my aunt and the kitchen ceiling collapsed 
I did not wake up. And so there is. Well, I the, well, I think I've told you I don't. I can't use the alarm on my phone. It's not loud enough for me. Like I have to have like a legit like I have one. I have a legit like electric buzzer because it needs to be loud. Otherwise, I won't hear it. I'll sleep right through it. I'll sleep right through it. I'll sleep through most things. Uh, my alarm upstairs has a vibrator extension that I put underneath my pillow <laughs> to wake me up. I know. Not not like a fun vibe. I guess it could be. But like it's like a circular disc that that is attached yeah. to it. And I keep it under my pillow. And that doesn't necessarily wake me up all the time. Um, she says she's talking to Luke. Luke says to her, you sleep harder than anyone I've ever met. I wish I could I could have denied that, but it was true. I was a hard sleeper. It took me a while to actually go to sleep, but once I finally got there, I could not be moved. The apocalypse could hit, and I wouldn't even have a chance to get away from the zombies because they'd get me in my sleep. I mean, yeah. truly. I, truly. I have a feeling that, mo- that a large number of us probably, because I, I mean... The more and more I think about the stuff that, like, the anxiety that riddles me most of the time, how yep. I can't meditate, how I can't do this and this, and my brain's constantly going. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times my mouth is going faster because it's trying to keep up with my brain. Yep. Um, is uh, all part of this. I think a lot of us, because I think because we are kind of trained we are trained like this growing up too yep. is that like because our attention span is the size of a gnat that that probably has not helped yeah and i think the attention span in general is getting worse for literally all of us because of technology mm-hmm. but i think um i think some of the things that Some of the reasons that people get weird about, like, ADHD diagnoses and things like that, it's all a spectrum, right? So, like, autism, Mm -hmm. ADHD, Asperger's, everything is on a spectrum. It's different for everyone. Everyone experiences it differently. But when we start to talk... It's a beautiful umbrella. It is a beautiful umbrella. But I think when we start to talk about sensory issues, people's brains immediately go to autism. And then they just, like... Maybe because of, like, all of the misinformation that we all grew up Could with. Be. Like, they Could think, be. like, I, well, I don't have autism, you know? But also, like, there's nothing wrong with having autism. You just have to, like, figure no. out how you can live your life with autism. Like, it's not... Right. It, there's nothing... I you're definitely... not, like, a lesser person because you have autism. But, like, I think that there's right. still such a stigma around it. That Mm -hmm. when people think to themselves like, oh, I have sensory issues. Does that mean I have autism? Like, I, I don't think it's really about that. I think that. No, it's just a, I I think it's a mental block that people kind of like get stuck on. I think for the longest time people will say it's like they're peccadillos at somebody. It's my, it's my pet peeve. My pet peeve is I have misphonia. Like my my sister and I both have misphonia and it is something that it's like, don't tell me that's not related to something because like it is the sound of mouth people chewing makes me want to vomit or punch something like actually like punch something most Mm -hmm. of the time like wet mouth kissing in movies i want to fucking knock something out like it's Mm -hmm. just obnoxious or somebody crinkling something um but like don't tell me that's not part of this beautiful umbrella that we have here like it totally is all just if if we all just kind of like were to be more accepting of everything that's under in that umbrella, like I definitely have been tested and people are like, you're, you're on the spectrum somewhere. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, yeah. I, I don't care. It does not bother me. I'm like, yeah, no, that's, I, I would, would assume. I just want to know so that I can like, like she says in the, in that excerpt, um, she was assuming or hoping it would be like a fix all like that. She would know what the problem was and then yeah. she'd be able to fix it. But the thing is, even if it's not, because it won't be, like, knowing what you have is not the cure, right? But what it does is arm you with knowledge so that you can try and understand, like, this is a thing. Yeah. This is a different way that my brain works. And this is a way that I can use that to my advantage and or um, ways that I can cope with that better. And I think it's really important that, like, we are armed with that information. I, I just really, like, too long didn't read, very much appreciated mm-hmm. the different way 
that ADHD was discussed in this book. Because for me, it felt a lot more real, like real life to how people, women specifically, in my general age group have been experiencing life, especially in like the last, you know, X number, like the last decade in particular. And like one of my friends who is diagnosed ADHD said to me, I was like, can you like develop it? And she was like, I don't know that you can so much develop it is that you might like something might have happened that like triggered more of your symptoms Mm -hmm. and like made it more difficult for you to mask those symptoms. And she was like, for you, it sounds like that event was COVID. Like having being locked up in the house for that long and being on such a strange schedule because you were working all these fucking weird ass hours and like all of that stuff really took away this the processes and the stability that you had in place that helped you mask those symptoms. And now all yeah, those things are gone. What happened with COVID in general, having COVID fucked yeah. with our brains too. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? for fuck's sake, like. I will. We'll ne- we. It'll be years before we fucking oh, figure yeah. out all the shit that happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your top on, my dear? Mine's pretty. It's like it's it's pretty close. It's just the fact that it's like I was so. I, okay, guys. I I love my millionaire. I don't really love them. I. It's okay if it's a multi billionaire, millionaire, whatever, very wealthy hero, but. Sure. Y'all, no, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. You don't want to date a billionaire. Do you want to date Elon Musk? No. Do you want to date Mark Zuckerberg? No. No. Do you want to date the penis-headed Mark uh, um, Jeff Bezos? No. So why do you think that any of these guys... And also, there's no 25-year-old billionaire. Sorry. Unless no. it's like inherited money. and no. Yeah, like unless there was a generous head start on that. Right. So to see real people and real situations, like this is where I fucking grew up, guys. This is like my hometown. Like this is there's trailers. There are people in trailers, man, in this book. And I knew people in trailers. I had relatives in trailers. Like, yeah. So it was like it was a slice of life that I connected with and are related to because I'm like, I have very diverse sides of my family. My dad's side of the family is very different from my mom's side of the family. But, like, I, I'm i very, like, for the most part, like, both sides are middle class, but we're probably, like, growing up on the lower lower bit of middle class. So, it, it, this was, this spoke to me very, very, very closely, because I'm like, yeah. yes, these are things that, like, yeah, there was a fucking bar in town that everyone would go to. Like, this is, yeah. you know, and, um, it, it, I liked that that I was like was a, it was and I in, in, in her afterwards she talks about like uh, some of the questions that were posed to her is like why do you write small town romances she's because they're fucking good and I'm like yeah. yes like nothing like and, and relatable and we both talked about this earlier yes and I'm gonna say this even though she's gonna get mad at me it's like not much happens plot wise in this book like it and it doesn't have to and because it's like it is a slice of life it is mm-hmm. somebody making some very realistic decisions in their life yep and that's the impetus of the book yeah and that's fine like that's like that's all we need there's story enough but like we we definitely gloss over a lot of stuff we gloss over we're getting up to the point where it's like the day before a big fucking contest yeah and it's like where did those weeks between go like right. we don't see them and i don't miss them right yeah um, i don't think that like we needed we saw like the beginning we saw the critical points i should say of we her see preparing where, she, where for she's that. changing exactly yes. she's her healing we see like the high points of her healing and we're good with that like yep we um, see progress in her and we that's do. that's all we need to see we don't need to see no. her going every fucking day to practice we don't need to see that no we get the and, highlights and yeah, of that and, and that's what we need and we get that same thing with like at one point we, it's like a week be- since she's seen Luke class and you're like yeah. whoa okay yeah and it's like but it works it like you don't go okay well she pining for him the whole time no she was just fucking doing her thing and he was doing his thing well and, and they that's talked how you every do day it in the real world they talked every day yeah. they were like everything's this is fine even earlier before they were 
together. Like, oh, yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. She says, like, when she saw him for the first time, it was like a fucking week yeah. you see, before she saw him again. And it was like, I wasn't sitting there going, well, I wonder what happened to those four days that they didn't. It's like, no, I... Sure, she did her chores and shit at the at the fucking ranch, and that was it. And he I mean, did his stuff and went to the bar to run things because he owns half of the damn thing. You know, I mean, yeah, and he's got like he has baggage, and it's baggage that is like it's rough. And yeah, it is. and God. the fact is that like it's we we reach we there's no conclusion on that that baggage, and there's never going to be no. because that's the fucking real world. Like yep. that's. I mean, I have relatives who s- never talk to each other ever again because of one thing, and they live in the same town. That's just how it is. Yeah. Like, when you live in a small town, live and die in a small town. I mean, that's just fucking how it is. Yep. So I appreciated this. And not the f- and no, no hating on the millionaires and billionaires. I still read your damn books. But right. I really, really enjoyed just being like, this was so, I mean, for many things... Like we were just talking about the, you know, the, it just, it was very relatable and very, um, enjoyable to For read sure. something where it was like, and low stakes, zero stakes. Yeah. I mean, very zero low stakes. stakes. Yeah. I mean, the biggest stake is Gus finds out. That's it. Yeah. And of course she's like, I mean, what am I going to do with my but career? Not- but like, I don't, honestly, I never thought she'd actually go back. So like, whatever. No, you I didn't know. either. I didn't either. I, that like no. never crossed so. my mind. I and thought even, to myself, what is she going to do now? Yeah, but that's, of course. Like, I, I, figured, I figured they weren't want for money. So, like, somebody would figure out something. Like, but, yeah. again, they're not rolling in money. But no, they're, like, but they're, they're okay. doing okay. But, like, I mean, also, cost like, of living I, in Wyoming. What could that be? You know, it, it can't be, like... There's, like, four people in a moose. I mean... It can't be that incredible. Like, we're not living in New York City here. Right. Um, right. To that end, like, kind of piggybacking on your top bun here, I grew up on a farm and not an 8,000 acre farm. It, it's not, it was not like a cat. It was not a ranch. It was not a horse ranch. It was not right. a cattle ranch, but we did have cows and peacocks and pigs. And like, there was a lot going on and I was not from, getting up. We're both from farming communities. Right. Mm-hmm. And I did not get up at four o'clock in the morning, but one of no. the people in my household did, you know, I mean, that was like normal that, Someone was getting yep. up way before fucking dawn every single day and doing things. They were out in the fields every single time. It, you know, it was nice outside. They were getting anything done that they could outside. So um, it was it was very relatable for me to, like, read about the chores that they would do and, like, the things that – I'm not familiar with horses. I've never been on a horse. Like, that was not a part of my upbringing. Um, we did have a pony, but – the oh, pony see, and that was, was mine because my aunt, my aunt had the horse farm. So okay, so like again, awesome. Like I actually wish that I would have had yeah. some horse experience because I think that they're just incredible animals. But um, regard, we weren't allowed to ride the pony. The pony was old as hell. So um, and he must have died <laughs> at some point. Like I don't remember when that happened. But anyway, um, I agree with you with your top bun. It's very much like a a kind slice of life. You know, like, it's just... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't... It's not shying away from the shitty stuff. Like, yeah. it's not... Like, even the we when they talk about the um, dirty boot, mm-hmm. it's not a place that you're going to go into in the daytime. No, it is full of neon lights. It is a dive bar. And it is a dive bar. And it's not a place... Like, yeah, you're going to go... And, and I read ahead. I don't know if you read yeah. into Ada's. Yes. And I read Ada sitting there trying. It's like, there's no food here. I don't uh-huh. know why it's there are food. And she's eating yeah. like the oldest bag she's of She's so Doritos. mad at Google. And I'm, <laughs> the Google yeah. said that they Because I've been in food. I've been in bars. I've been in bars like that. I've yep. been like, God damn it. Why didn't we eat before we got here? Like, yeah, yeah exactly. And poor, like, yeah. you know, it's Luke before, like, you, before yeah. she finds out who it is. But he, like, yeah. took pity on her and, like you said, gave her the world's oldest bag of Doritos. Yeah. But, yeah. It's... But, I mean, again, I've been in many bars where you go up and you're like, you better just ask for a beer because... There's nothing else Or whiskey here. straight because nothing else. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. Enjoyable. Also, the All right. the intense need to get out of your hometown felt. Felt. 
And at the same time, like being so attached to your family that like, yeah, you feel like you need to get back and like, um, you know, real talk, something happened this past week where I was offered an opportunity possibly to move out of state. And I was like, I can't like, I fucking can't. I can't yeah. like, I get it. I can't leave. Yeah. I'm like, I can't leave my parents. Yeah, this I get point it. In their in their life, you know, so like I get it. I fucking like it resonated. I'm like, yeah. I mean, there's just things that you, yeah. And she comes back home after like years of being gone, and she's she's kind of like remarking on or observing the things that are different um, that like you would not notice if you hadn't been gone for years because it's different. Like watching someone yeah. age. Yeah is yeah. different oh, if you yeah. see them Endless every day. Yeah, yeah, but like watching someone age every day is different than like if you just yeah. don't see them for a few years and then you're like, holy shit. What's that, that, that thing is like, I wake up, I woke up and all of a sudden I'm fucking 43. You oh, know, like, yeah. You, yeah, like you don't, you're not paying attention, but then all of a sudden you start looking at your skin and you're like, you're, my skin's getting a little more papery than it ever was Is it because past, you wash like, your face with like fucking... Irish Spring or some shit? Do you need a skincare regimen? I have CeraVe now. Thank you very much. Thank I do you. wash my faces when I wear makeup. Oh, uh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> After this, I'm going to like really scrub my face and then use retinol and then use like um, it is it's winter time and therefore I use like the double moisturizer from the French brand or whatever. Something Pose. Whatever. Ah, all right. One day, I'm going to get a serum on your face. Okay. Moving on. Shall we? You make me feel like I've got the worst, like, Crypt Keeper face in the planet. You don't. That's the part that's so infuriating to me. Your face is still beautiful and your skin still looks gorgeous. It's (laughs) fucking infuriating that, like, you just started using CeraVe recently. And it's only because my boss bought me a giant bottle. Jesus Christ. She's like, here, I bought this because I told her the same thing. I'm going like, to buy you about. like a year's supply of hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid. Like, I cannot fucking handle this. <laughs> Sorry. God I damn it. I did start using the castor oil for my like, Oh, for my, your, eye, my, your eyelashes and stuff? Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10. When I, I remember that. it. That's the problem. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm the worst girl. <laughs> You're not. You're wonderful. It's just that it's not fair that your skin is so beautiful and you don't do anything to it. But I, you, I, I mean, I have. Well, it's all right. It's fine. I mean, like, I do have red from 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 Graves' disease. I do have the the. They call it the red. Like it's like the rosacea rash, like around your face. But like that's I get, not I get a that, skin. So. I mean, it is a skin issue, but like it, there's an underlying issue that causes that. Not like yeah, you neglecting your skin. No. Okay, let's talk about meat. All right. Which, which. <laughs> like a pork loin. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, I was thinking of a different kind of meat. Um, oh no, I was thinking of a, I was thinking of a jerk off Jerry. Oh my god. <laughs> that fucking weird ass doll. Okay. Would you like to discuss your meat first? Um, why don't you go? Because I don't really have anything. So I'm just I know it's to, like, really I, hard. Because like, there's not much I didn't care about for the, in this in this book. Like Agreed. I didn't that I didn't care for. Yeah. So it's hard because I was like, maybe if you say some middle jog something in mine. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't want to say exactly what he says because I was honestly so shocked by it. Um. Anytime you have like a you know, older brother's best friend, my best friend's little sister oh, romance. Yeah. You're gonna end up with Yo. that moment where the brother finds out. And I knew because Gus is like, he's very overprotective. And I knew that when he found out it was going to be explosive. And I assumed that he would hit Luke hard. And he does. Yeah. He, he punches Luke hard. Now, I... I expected that. And I honestly wasn't even upset by it because I, A, knew it was coming. And B, like, it it just sort of is like, 
you know how like people say I mean, this is very stereotypical but like people say that girl like girls fighting is so much more um like traumatizing because they don't necessarily like move on from things whereas like boys might like punch each other and move on with their day <laughs> like Oh, that's true. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, we, well, we, we hold things, we hold grudges. Yeah, yeah, and, like, maybe we don't talk it all through and, like, whatever, whereas boys mm-hmm. just, like, get mad at each other and then, like, have a fucking fist fight and they move on with their day. Um, again, very stereotypical. But, like, I expected that something like that would happen. Um, it happens in a lot of books with this trope. The thing that killed me, though was just how far Gus took it. Because Gus oh, says yeah, something yeah. that I was like, dude, you're t- you're talking about your best friend. Like, what the fuck? You know he's a good but person. You know he is. You've been best does, friends with him. Yeah. But he does apologize for oh, that. Oh yeah, he and he should. He's gonna. He should apologize yeah. for it many more times. He should grovel. He for should grovel a long for time. a while. Yeah. But like, yeah. even in that moment, like, even if you're super mad, like this person is your best fucking friend. You have been friends with him for fucking two decades. Like he's. Uh, I think at one point, I think he says that he's like Luke says he's like five years older than Emmy. So like you have. Emmy mm-hmm. is 27. So therefore, um, I think 27. So Luke is like 32, which means that Gus, is, Gus 32 is 32 or older. You have known him for 20 fucking years. Mm-hmm. And you're going to, you've watched him grow and change and step up and be a responsible adult who picks up your yeah. daughter and takes her her to her fucking horseback riding lessons which he teaches you trust yeah. this man with your daughter and you're well, gonna like I, yeah throw insults like that at him that fucking infuriated me well i will tack on one thing and i have another thing that i just thought of the one thing the other thing i want to tack on there is like and i'm sorry like yes i know that brothers are very like can be very protective of their sisters that's usually in cases where dad's not around dad's been around dad's around and dad dad's is around. amazing dad actually dad actually says i like it yeah dad's <laughs> like, like good for you says, i like this yeah this is yeah. great he says you you and luke you guys are I like great this. together yeah yeah so like that's part of me is calling a little bit of bullshit on that because i'm like i don't necessarily think like there's a point where you go dude what's because like we learn a couple of things that they've done to people in her past like yeah. boys in her past i'm like what's what's with your relationship with your sister like, like what's going what is wrong like, with you what is wrong with you i'm like this is like almost an obsession and you need to calm down like if your father doesn't if, like it would be a different story if the father was this upset but you're not her father but even so then why like are you this upset amos is like I'd still tell. Oh no! If it was if it was Amos said something like that, I'd be like, "Dude, that's wrong, man!" Yeah. Like, but Amos wouldn't. That's the thing. Yeah. So part of me is like, "What's with your relationship with your sister?" I'm wondering as we and get. I, think, into... I don't think anything sexual or anything gross or anything. But I just think I think I'm like, there's just something weird. Like it's just it it borderlines weird. It tiptoes the line of awkward. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if we're gonna get more of that. Like more of that story of why he's like that, probably in his book, which I think will be great. Like if that's the case, then she's setting up a really great storyline for Gus. Yeah, which I, you know, awesome. Can't wait to read it. It could be. It could be like he he saw something like with another woman. He didn't like. He just couldn't. You know, couldn't under like understand and take and blah blah blah. And who knows? I mean. But it just yeah, it could I be see like him from. wanting like, to like sense. step up as the second parent because their mom died when I mean Emmy literally doesn't even remember their mom. No, she actually says, "How do you you know?" It's really tough grieving someone you don't know. Yeah, and you don't remember. Yep. Yeah, which I it was actually thinking I was like, God, that has to be so awkward to be like 
to to everyone else has a memory of their mom mm-hmm. and she doesn't. Right. And I would feel mo- odd man. I mean, like this has to be feel odd man out. Yeah. So the other thing that I and it's not like a, it's not a bad thing. It's just what I wanted more of is like um, I would have liked m- more of them going on a couple dates because yeah. it seems like they're going from zero to dating zero to in love very quickly. And like they don't like they go on one date, but it's not even really a date. Right. But it would be nice of them, him to take her to dinner or something like that. Or, you know, and, and, and maybe, and maybe just that causes a little bit more of like a, I think honestly, it would be if we had, going back to the Gus thing, if they had gone on a date and been seen in town mm-hmm. and then like really seen in town, it gets back to Gus and he has a problem. We had to work through that. Yeah. That might have added a couple of stakes to it. That might, I mean. I, you all know that I love low stakes, but maybe a couple stakes, a couple T-bones here would have been, like, good to, like, have just surrounded t-bones. out a little bit more. Yeah, but you know what I was? Plays. I was really glad that they didn't, that Lila did not have that, like, moment where she could have gone this way where, like, she was denying that they were a thing and then they broke up because he oh, felt like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I was wondering if a third act breakup would come and I was really glad that it didn't. No, agreed. I, but I think that there should have been like a confrontation earlier. Sure. Yeah. No, that yeah, also I get that. made me angry because it took away from her fucking win. And it took away from her too. win and also like her, like this moment where the two of them. Closure. Yeah. Yeah, it like it took away this moment for her for her career, and it also like took away from you could tell like he was in that moment like he was about to say something important mm-hmm. and yeah. got derailed. So, I I think I I I think it might have been better if it came earlier. So we could have like it would have felt because to me like we do have like a quote unquote it's not a third eye breakup but they do have a separation of of sorts yeah they still and talk every I, day but like yeah so to me it was like that that getting back together was like okay but maybe if there could have had been just a little bit more steak a little bit maybe just a smidgen more steaks maybe if like a of the filet mignon maybe like if <laughs> now I want steak um Maybe if, or like, the competition was the reunion of, like, the first time that um, Gus had seen Luke or something, you know, like. Yeah, or they were all together to to cheer her on or something like that. Like, everybody had been accepting of it, and we were all there to cheer her on. And and also more Riley. I need more Riley in my life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, now, I yeah. I also do want to be clear. This book is so fucking good. Like, I really had to think about what I didn't like about this book. But literally, that's what, like, I just thought on the fly because I'm like, I don't really know. There's something that, that was, like, was It was difficult. Um, it was very difficult. I mean, it's also not long, even though it's 356 pages. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, but it goes fast. It like reads a, fast for it something. Moves, like, fucking, like, for you yeah. to say not... Like, it's not event-driven, right? So, like, it, it's right. very, like you said, slice of life, kind of character, like, slow kind of moving plot in a way, except that it just fucking flies. Like, this book, mm-hmm. there's very little, moves. like, downtime at all. It moves quick. It moves quick. and I, I read think, most like... of this book, like, 75% of this book yesterday. I just loved it. Like uh, I didn't same, want to stop. Same, like I loved this same. book. Same. It was, and it, and because I think it's lighthearted, but she writes really well. Mm-hmm. But it's not like so. It's not like simple. But no, at yeah. the same time, like it's it's very like complex writing. But at the same time, it's like it moves very quickly. Yep. Agreed. All right. Let's move to our bottom buns. Okay. Give me a bottom bun. I wonder if we, now this is what you think that we might have the same. Mm-hmm. Okay, go for it. My bottom bun is Luke. Fucking Brooks and his filthy ass mouth. Okay, mine's a little different. It is it is Luke, but it's not his mouth. Is it just Luke in general? It's it is how it is we get another false first false hard, and it is how Luke Luke describes her the first time he sees her. Okay. Go ahead. Why don't you talk about the sweet stuff and then I'll talk about the dirty shit? He the way so 
for the longest time, she also had the biggest crush on him growing up. Oh, and yeah. she does tell at some point, like, um, what, um, so, sorry, <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, ugh. Um, so she actually, we do get a point in time, and this could be something else that could have been a me, is that we could have built a little bit on, like, gone into, because he, there's, there's a point, and there's a party that she brings up that he is horrible to her. Mm-hmm. And maybe if we could have brought that up a little bit more, but we're definitely, like, everything's in the past, and it's, it's in the past. Yeah. But I'm like... What happens is actually fucking traumatizing. Like I was traumatized for her. Like yeah, like I would have been really upset. in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, "Fuck you forever." And to me, like Gus, Gus should have been like, "Fuck you, guy." Like you don't talk to my sister like that. Like either, but different sort of circumstances. Right. But um, and also uh, a decade ago, um, she was like seventeen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, she was like, yeah, literally, like, like, she very young and like with a guy who was older than Luke. So like, a dude. I mean, there was an age gap that was not acceptable. Like, clearly something like that dude was gross and grooming her. But like, and yeah, he was going to get her a drink. Yeah, and he told the guy to like to go fucking shove off. Yeah, and but he comes back to her. He's like, you come dressing like that. What do you expect? Blah 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 Mm -hmm. blah. It was rough. Like. Mm -hmm. He meant to hurt her, and he does. And he did. And I kind of wish we had gotten some closure on that, because that, especially at 17 years old, fucking stays with somebody. Yeah. I mean, it makes, it molds you into what you are yep. as an adult when you hear shit like that. So I can't believe that that didn't affect her. And again having ADHD is not something that she wouldn't you know I don't know dwell uh, she wouldn't on hyper every fixate fucking on night. for the rest of her life yeah yep yeah like the things that I think about from fucking third grade that I said yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. or middle school yeah. yeah the stupid shit that I fucking said yeah that I think about like at night yep. when I'm laying in a bed yep yep, yep. so any hoozles um, so this is when she's coming into the bar he sees her for the first time. He owns the he owns dirty boot, mm-hmm. D- dirty boot bar. Devil, devil's boot, dirty boot. Is it devil? I thought it was dirty boot. Maybe I don't know. Whatever. Okay. D- DBs. Oh, it's DBs. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Occasionally, I was with Gus when she called, or I saw in the paper that she'd won another title. But that was different from her walking into my bar on a Friday night, looking like that. Holy hell, had she always looked like that? Or was it just the way she looked in the neon glow? Her hair was reckless and messy. It looked even longer than when I last saw her hitting the middle of her back. She was wearing a skirt made out of some shorny, some sort of shiny material set in her silk, I think. It moved her body like water. It made me wonder how she looked wrapped up in bedsheets. But not just any bedsheets. My bedsheets. Shit, where did that come from? What the fuck was wrong with me? It was obviously been too long since I'd gotten laid. I, I didn't want to think about how long. That's your best friend's little sister dipshit. Thank you, Luna. Thank you for your song. Uh, thank you for your solo. Um, two words rang in my head like alarm bells off limits. But damn, she did look good. It was okay for me to acknowledge that she looked good, right? She was a grown woman. I was a grown man who generally enjoyed looking at a beautiful woman. I just hadn't seen one in a while. So he's got all this, like, fucking I'm super sexy. But then he and he thinks it's all about the neon lights. It's about yeah. the neon lights. Everyone looks great in the neon lights. <laughs> Which but I then, honestly feel like is a throwback to a Brooks and Dunn song called Neon Moon. <laughs> you, I thought about you a lot for this movie because I or this book because I was like, I remember that you like country music. And I, was like, I did. Oh, yep. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of country music now, but when I grew up, I mean, I grew up on a farm. It was country music. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find when she, uh, um, when, when he sees her for the second time outside of the neon lights. And, um, okay. I'm truly impressed like, that I remember hold. Neon Moon was written by Brooks and Dunn. <laughs> 1992, uh, you guys. On. I'm trying to. It's after the like the fucking like um, the um, 
the the horse riding lessons. Oh yeah, because um, he sees her there and he says something about the neon lights. Uh, I'm gonna uh, do a search for neon. Okay, you do that while I read to you some of the lyrics from Neon Moon because I'm telling you this is not accidental. Um, <laughs> I think of two young lovers running wild and free. I close my eyes and sometimes see. You in the shadows of the smoke-filled room. No telling how many tears I've sat here and cried or how many lies that I've lied telling my poor heart she'll come back someday. Oh. Oh, but it'll be all right as long as there's light from a neon moon. Because she also, I mean, like, he definitely had a thing for her, obviously. That's why he he, he definitely had a thing for her. Yeah, he did. Okay, here's where it is. God damn it. Emmy Ryder looked just as good in the daylight as she did in the neon, which was damn good, by the way. And there she was, in faded blue jeans and a ratty George Strait t-shirt that was cropped short. She was a walking wet dream for any cowboy. Like, he... It's definitely false first, false hard. Like, 100%. he is... 100%. Like, some point he says, like, she's it for me. Like, I, mm-hmm. I've i never been in love, but I know this is what I'm feeling. I'm I'm in love with her. Like, he he knows it pretty. Cool. And, and honestly, if, I think if you told Gus then, but he's being, he's, because she's being she respectful of her. Yeah, because she was like, I, I, I'm not comfortable talking about it yet. Because he got some really good advice about that. Show her that you're there. Yep. Show her, show up for her through action. And you know what? Another way that he shows up through for her through action is that he buys a fucking pill like dispenser for, for her, her ADHD so meds. So she's nothing to remember. Yep. So she won't forget them. If he wanted to, he would. Is all I'm saying. Yep. Yep. Dear man, I mean, fucking step it do up. Do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about the barrels he set up? The barrel course that he set up for her. <sighs> okay. Luke is just pretty great. I mean, like he's he's a pretty good book boyfriend. Let's just say, like he's he wears he wears he's great. the t shirt mutilator. <laughs> he mutilates. Oh, we didn't t-shirts. talk about our names. We didn't. So my name. My name is Luke's mutilated muscle team mm-hmm. because she talks about like how he makes like like if you know to the guys at the gym yep. who cut off the fucking arms of their shirt, mm-hmm. that's what he does with all of his shirts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can Nip see slips. his nipples. Yep. And and I think it's perfect time to talk about yours because of your p- bottom bun. Yeah, my name is Veronica. Can't stop thinking about Luke's dirty mouth. Um, I do want to read one thing that plays to your point. Um, oh, before things, great. right before things start to get sexy, um, he is staring at the big Wyoming night sky and thinks, I couldn't believe the universe was so big and I got placed on this random floating rock at the same time as Clementine Ryder. And that is when he turns around and runs back <laughs> to her cottage and, uh, Sexy times ensue. Now, oh, you know one thing I also want to want to add before you go into sexy times. I did send some I did send some quotes to my friend Veronica because I said this book is fucking made for oh, you. Yeah, and I would just like to read a couple of them to you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Brooks wasn't just tall; he was broad. His dark brown hair, which was always long, hit the middle of his neck. It had a slight wave to it that a lot of women would die for, including me. Just like his stupid eyelashes that framed his stupid chocolate eyes, his hair was long enough that it could tuck it that he could tuck it behind his ears, which meant I could see his stupid sharp jarline with its stupid five o'clock shadow. I'm sure there were a lot of girls out there who would love for their brothers to have best friends as good looking as Luke Brooks. I was one of them. That is until he opened his stupid mouth and talked with his stupid low voice. <laughs> I really should be more creative with my descriptive insults by now, but Luke Brooks has a habit of frustrating me enough that all coherent thoughts basically race out of my head. I was like, oh, you love those to fucking demeaning, like, like a <laughs> insulting, stupid, handsome you know. face. I love yep. that shit. Yep. 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 So this stupid, handsome face is coming back for some fucking sex. This stupid, handsome face has the filthiest fucking mouth. Like, I, yep. last night, was sitting on the couch reading this and just 
face flaming. And like at this point, I've read a lot of shit, right? So like I'm it's not often that I am blushing while I read books. I fucking well, blush. I did I enjoy the this. times. I did enjoy when he blushed because he does he definitely blushes a couple times in this. He does. Yeah. So uh she had made a comment like prior to this. This is like the first time that they're actually going to have sex. Um but she had made a comment like I'll bet he's like dominant in bed. Like I'll bet he's like mm. bossy. Um so she says to him, Your pants, I want them off. Brooke's large hands went to his belt and his jaw tensed. That's the last command you give me, he said. Fuck, I knew he'd be this way in bed. I'm in charge tonight. Do you understand? Everything about him was all-consuming, and I didn't trust my voice to answer him. (laughs) I nodded my head. I wanted him to be in control. I trusted him to take care of me. I asked you a question, sugar. (laughs) He wasn't just going to let me get away with a nod. Yes, I understand. Um, And then... Right immediately afterward, he says, stop staring at my cock like that, sugar. My eyes go back up to Brooks. Like what? Like you want me to put put you on your knees and shove it down your throat? Jesus Christ. It's the sugar for me. It's the sugar for me. Yes, it reminded me of Jeruna's. Yes! Yes. Jeruna me for all men. Which is a Patreon tier, by yep. the way. Um, also, like, so the first time that they actually have sex, first, she gets off by just dry humping him. And it's oh, yeah. really hot. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, hot. we've had a couple, like, dry, dry humping scenes. This was one of the hottest ones, oh, I have to say. my God. Like, really hot. And he... Yeah. Fucking like runs his mouth the entire time and it is so yes, he does. hot so yeah. hot um like i can't i mean holy shit just so hot um there is i told you earlier before we started that the series of notes i left um started with just the, like the sweating hot face emoji <laughs> Escalated uh-huh. to Luke in all caps, and then sweet Jesus with the hot face emoji, and then just screaming <laughs> when he said good girl. Um, and mm-hmm. then, uh, okay, so he's already made her come once, or I mean, she, she dry humped him until she came, and then um, he wants to go down on her, and she's like, I've, it, that doesn't work for me. I've never come that way. Like, you don't have to do that. And uh, he says, um, she says, I've never come that way, so it's not worth your time. And he says, not worth my time. He sounded angry. I don't know what type of men you've been sleeping with, sugar, but devouring your perfect cut is always going to be worth my time. Don't worry, he does make her come. Um, it's just the amount of dirty talk is is hot. pretty good. And then, of course, he has a giant dick, and so she says, "You're so big," and he says, "You can take it, sugar. I'll go slow." <laughs> I was like red faced on the couch. <laughs> Holy shit! Anyway, Hot. Luke's filthy fucking mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. <clears throat> That's my bottom line. Luke's pretty great. I mean, Luke, Luke is, is great. pretty fucking great. And what I really like, again, about Luke is that, like, he has, ju- he is, like, in the last five years, gotten his shit to fucking uh-huh. gather. And he is solid. He's, fu- like... Riley to me like maybe that's the fourth book maybe we jump in time and we go we 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 have Riley's book I don't know I don't know but um Riley seemed to be like the impetus that everybody got their shit to go there is okay so I actually bookmarked this because I thought it was really um I thought it was really telling 
Um, uh, oh, so okay. just, just I'm gonna say, I was gonna give the context. Right. So Gus has um, he had a one night stand with Camille um, at Cami or Cam Camille, and yeah. Th- yeah, and so they decided like they just weren't good together as a couple, but they were good as friends, mm-hmm. and so they've stayed together as fr- like they 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 don't they co- they co-parent mm-hmm. as friends, and so. Um, but out of that came Riley. Yes. And uh, so she's five, I think. Yes. Right? Um, or four, yeah. maybe. But it says Camille was a one yeah. night stand from five years ago that resulted in Riley. Um, so Luke says, um, Riley was the most important thing in the world to Gus. And when she came along, things changed for him and they changed for me, too. I'd always been kind of a screw up. But to be fair, I came from a long line of screw ups. I was the result of an affair my mom had with my dad. My dad wasn't like Gus. He couldn't handle the responsibility. He couldn't step up. So I ended up in a house with my mom, her husband, and their sons. Safe to say, I wasn't much liked around there. I spent the first seven years of my life wondering what was wrong with me. I still wonder that, but everything changed when I met Gus. Um, And he goes around, he says, um, when Gus saw me getting tossed around by some fifth graders one day, he stepped in and basically told them to shove it in the best way a fourth grader could. Afterward, I ate lunch with him. Well, he had to give me some of his lunch because I didn't have any. And after school, he told Wes I was their new friend. That was it. When I found the Ryder boys, they treated me like I was worth something. Before I met them, I didn't even know what a friend was. I'd never had one, but that day I ended up with two. So when I watched Gus step up to the plate to be a father to his baby girl, I wanted to step up to the plate too. I was still a screw up, but at least I was a screw up with a job, a savings account, and a few goals for my bar. Yeah. I mean, is that not just like the quote unquote American dream? I mean, isn't that like what we all kind of want? We just want our like little space. We want a little like tract of land or a little tiny bit of of America and that's that's well, all and we want to work hard to for rich, something but we can... that like yeah that we earned and you know yep and end yep, up with something of. better yeah. than we grew up with you know like that's yep <sighs> to be one step ahead of how we started is yeah. the best yeah i think everyone's so, dream is to leave in you know whatever way is significant to them to like leave things better than they got them that's a montessori thing yes you always leave whatever you're working on you leave it better in better condition than when you found it yep but yeah man coolio would you recommend this book a thousand percent a hundred yep yep agreed Uh co-signed what (laughs) embarrass our mothers so fucking embarrassed like i actually recently told my mom i was with my mom and i was telling her like you know one of the i I think she stopped listening a long time ago which is totally fine um yes but i told her one of you know when we're done reviewing books in every episode we say would you recommend this book and would this book embarrass our moms and that made her laugh really hard um but yeah this would definitely embarrass her Yep. If this is the episode you chose to can, listen yeah. to, Mom, I am sorry. I know that Mama Ray can't find this, so it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I'm going to be real. I don't think Mama Veronica can either. And that's okay. It's that's okay. okay. That's okay. Um, all right. We're going to take a break. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about sun casting. We're going to talk about uh, ratings. And then we're going to do some recommendations. So we'll be back in two and two. And we're back. We're back, bitches. We sure are. We're super um, sad on this side over here because I just ruined a movie shit. for for Veronica. That's okay. I'm never gonna watch it because it sounds so fucking depressing. I can't take it. Yeah, it's pretty sad. So again, Ray is never allowed to pick, pick the movies. movies. 
Never. I go for the ones that are like, you know, critically acclaimed, and that's my problem. <laughs> when was it last year or the year before that we watched Promising a Woman? And I wanted to see Promising a Woman. After that was we watched two it two years ago, because we saw it everything everywhere all at once last year. Oh my god, that I also cried at that one. Um after promising a young woman, um, we hung up the Zoom call and I just sobbed, sobbed, like hysterically for Can solid you tell 30 her, minutes. Tell our audience about your first 10 minutes of Barbie. Oh, my God. OK, so I started watching the Barbie movie this week. Now, I've been wanting to see it. It's not like a lack of wanting to see it. It's a lack so, of having someone yeah. who would fucking watch it with me. So yeah. now that it's on HBO Max, or just Max, um, I was like, hey, I steal my friend Ray's login. I'm going to watch this. Um, uh-huh. It was a unexpected fucking snow day. And um, everyone else in my household was down in the basement playing video games. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to put away Christmas decorations and watch the Barbie movie. <sighs> I watched like the first 10 or 15 minutes of this movie. Um, Mr. Veronica, they came upstairs, um, the other Veronicas in this house. And um, little V was in the other room. And Mr. V was like, are you watching the Barbie movie without me? And I was like, excuse me, I have been waiting and begging literally anyone to watch this movie with me. And no one is taking me up on it. So I'm just fucking watching it on my own. (gasps) Why don't we just do a commentary was, on it? We should. This week. He was very upset, so I stopped watching it. Don't worry, though. That 10 or 15 minutes absolutely did me in. Later that day, I not only cried while doing the dishes, but hid in the basement so I could sob by myself. So I can't wait to watch the last hour and a half or two hours of this movie. It's going to be... Really gold star amazing. Guys, would you watch it if we did a commentary on Barbie? Let us know. Let us know. I think we should do it. I think it'd be fun. Okay. Anyway, um, Ray's not allowed to pick movies anymore. And um, let's talk about uh, ratings. Ratings with a hard and T. And casting. Mm-hmm. Okay, how we do? Would you like ratings? to tell? Well, I was going to say, would you like to tell people how we do ratings on this podcast? I'd be jizzed about it. Now, on this podcast, how we do ratings, hard T, is that uh, we have we don't do stars because we feel like that's limiting, right? Like mm-hmm. it's 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 not just a little too broad. Okay, how mm-hmm. we choose to do ratings on the show is by two different scales. One. Hearts. Hearts are how romantical was this book? Did it burn the cockles of your heart? Eggplants is the second rating system. And eggplants are not meant to be a binary thing. It's just like how hot was this book? You could also choose like chili peppers or Mm -hmm. fire. Okay? Just Mm -hmm. how hot was this book? All right? Ray? What would you like to begin with? Let's do hearts first. Oh, perfect. Okay. How many hearts would you give this book? I'm going to give this three and a half hearts. I think that's fair. Do you have any additional reasoning or do you want me to just give Um, mine? uh, I think because like it's, it's not like a, there's, there's no grand gesture. So there's nothing to like. Correct. Yeah. Coming into blossoming into, into, you know, it's just kind of like. They gradually fall in love. So I'm going to say 3.5. Yeah, I said three because it's like pretty, there's nothing that like is outlandish. Mm -hmm. It's a very natural progression of them hanging out together. Yeah, agreed. I think it's very sweet. Yep. Until you get to eggplants. How many eggplants did you get? (laughs) Okay. Honestly, I'm going to, because I've I've seen some shit, I'm going to say three and a half. Okay, that's fair. I said four because Luke's fucking mouth. I was blushing, and it's rare that I blush while I'm reading a book, but, like, goddamn. 
We've got to. Well, I, I will. I will explain further when we get to recommendations about why I gave it three and a half. That's fair. Okay, totally fair. Okay, um, would you like to go into stunt casting? <gasps> Let's do that. It's super fun. All right, so oh, we do cut stunt casting. We do cunt casting on this podcast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yep, uh, we do stunt casting on this podcast, um, where we 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 um, we cast a, 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 a if we we're going to make a movie of the book, who would we cast um, mm-hmm. uh, in the in the lead roles? I only did two. I'm assuming you just did two. Same. Okay. So I will go first. We always start with the ladies because it's the ladies, and I went for something a little different on this one. Give me one second because I should have thought yep. of this beforehand, but I did because I'm the worst. Um, is opening the these words. all in like separate fucking you know open uh, like if a you're new on our tab. Patreon you can watch us do this. Um, I I think I mentioned when we were talking about the book, I we were talking about um writers and like people themselves as as like um the women in particular of like their their longevity in in the sport. And, mm-hmm. you know, I thought to myself, Ray, why don't you find an actual writer, a barrel writer? Oh, OK. OK. Oh, by the it's way, taken. I had to Google barrel riding. Her name is in Haley barrel riding. Kinsel. Um. Oh, she's beautiful. She is 29 years old. This is... Oh, it's not going to show me. Okay, this is actually supposed to be a video of her riding barrels. That and that's her? Because she's gorgeous. Uh, if you don't know what barrel riding is, because I didn't, um, it is where there are three, like, water barrels, essentially, like, big barrels set up in an arena. And uh, the rider and the horse are supposed to go in, like, a cloverleaf pattern around said barrels. Um in the book, she runs it in 14.8 seconds. It's real fast, you guys. I mean, she's beautiful. Yes. And also, I don't understand how they go that fast. I have I have several questions. Um, but good for Haley Kinsel. Yeah. So she's really pretty. She actually has this whole, like, she has a whole spread of herself, like, um, uh, in, I forgot what mag. No, these were just actually like a photographer did these of her, um, this sure. Christy Marie. But then she also actually has a, this other picture is from, um, I don't know. It's from a magazine. It's called Bo- Boho Chic. And it's mm. her and her dog, actually. And it's super cute. Um, she's very pretty. She's got dark hair. Um, yeah, again, 29 years old. Looks great. I mean, super cute. Oh, look at her pretty dog. Yep. So, and mm-hmm. she just got married not too long ago. She's very pretty. Oh, good for And her. not to somebody who looks like, you know. Luke. Um, what's his nuts? Luke. I'm fortunate. Okay. There you go. That's okay. I hope she's happy. I'm sure. Oops. And in love. Okay. All right. Um, I think I've chosen this person before. Um, again, don't care. Um, I chose Haley Steinfeld. Oh, I like now, it. Yep, it works. Yep. Haley Steinfeld to me, like, I know how old she is because I was Googling her. She was born in 1996. But, like... To me, she could be my age or she could be 20. I truly have no idea. Um, yeah, she's got regardless, a very young face. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's also 5'8", um, which is pretty close to where Emmy actually is. I think she's like 5'9", she says. Um, beautiful, long brown hair. Um, at one point, she talks about wearing a crop top. Um, but yep. she wears it over a red bathing suit. So I found a couple of, and she wears a red dress in the book. So um, I found a couple of photos of her in, like, just wearing red in general. Um, and, you know, fucking flawless. <gasps> Haley Steinfeld. 
No shit. When? We don't know. Fucker. That's what mine said earlier. That's fine. Um, do you want to hit? Is GarageBand recording? Do you want to hit recording GarageBand? Okay. And we'll just. Okay, that's fine. Right. Yeah, it might be fine. I mean, right. It, it might not matter. No, you're fine. I was done. Um, Haley Steinfeld, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking I love gorgeous. It. Yeah. Um, that's about it. That's all I got. Are you ready for the boys? I am. So here's the thing. I mm-hmm. picked somebody. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you this gentleman that I picked first. Okay. I picked two. I, and there was a I know you I said, picked. like, I'm worried we're going to pick the same person. And I was like, I don't think so. Because, well, okay. So here's the first person I picked. Um, his name. Escaspard. Maybe. It's taking a second. It's thinking about it. it is, oh, there he is. Gaspar Yolial. Um, he is very handsome. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I've never awesome. seen this yep, gentleman. Awesome. Holy it's because shit. because he's passed away. He's no longer with us. He passed oh, away God. in 2022. Yeah. Okay. So after that, I was like, okay, maybe I won't use him. <laughs> and um, honestly, the first person who actually popped in my head was, um, what's his name from um, Supernatural? The one with the <gasps> brother with the longer hair. Oh, yes. Okay. Jer- uh, Jared Padalecki. But I was Fair. like, he can't really grow a beard. And he should have a beard. Oh. Then I was reading, I got to the acknowledgments at the end of the book. And the questions. And she, someone asked her who she had in mind when she wrote Luke. Who did she have in mind? I didn't read them. And it was Taylor Kitsch. So I was like, well, fuck it. Then I'm just going to go with Taylor Kitsch. Okay, if that's who I she thought it. about. That's who I'm going to pick. So Hot. Taylor fucking catch. So that's my, that's why I thought, because I didn't know if you had read them. And so that's I why not. I was like, I wonder if we're going to have the same person. Okay. Attractive. And I approve. Yes. Yes. Um, and we, we've talked about his fucking banana hammock that he wore or his, uh, his little, like, we were actually just talking about his little fucking, um, square, uh, square, undies that he wore in fucking the covenant not too long ago i don't know i yep. just i have several questions is all i'm saying those little those little tidy whiteies or those little tidy uh tidy not whiteies several questions yep also he's he's like i mean pretty much well known now for playing like the fucking wacko and waco um What's his name? Uh, David Koresh. So quite well, which is scary. So mm. there you go. Method actor, maybe. Um, okay. I chose someone. Now, how I do most of my stunt. Oops, sorry. Microphone. How I do most of my stunt casting is that I Google, in this case, male actors with brown eyes. Right. She talks Mm -hmm. about, like, his chocolate eyes, okay? How this man popped up when I Googled actors with brown eyes is a mystery. Because his eyes... It's a mystery. Not brown. Not brown. Um, Context. Uh, His eyes are definitely blue-ish. Maybe green, depending on the light. I'm excited. I I don't care because once I saw him, I was like, I just can't. This is just who it is. He can wear colored contacts. Okay. All right. I shall show you now. I've never seen anything that this this particular man has been in. Um, I also just don't care. Okay. Um, I chose this man, Derek Thaler. 
Now, uh, oops, where is his IMDb? Hang on. Oh my God! Hello. Do you see him? He looks like he could go like fucking yeah. He can go like dig a ditch and come in and right? fuck me. This was the fir- <laughs> right. This was the Into first next week. photo that I saw, and I was like, yes, that's him. Um, Jesus. All right. He has been. He's in going to Pound a- Town hard. Obviously, he's been in a ton of things I have never seen. Okay, um, lots of That's TV not saying stuff. Much, though. Right, lots of TV stuff, lots of like made for TV shit. Um, he was in the movie Valentine's Day, but he was uncredited. He's been on Conan. Um, he was apparently in a video called Catherine Heigl Hates Balls. I mean, just tons of stuff I've just never seen. Um, so therefore, this I've man li- should be in things. I mean, he, he should, should be. be in me, but he should be in things. Ayo. Um, he was on Leverage Redemption, which was a TV series, apparently. Really? I watched. Oh, no, I watched that. Apparently, he played Billy McShane. Um, he's been in a couple other things that have been rated okay, but overall, not rated highly. Anyway, here's another photo of him holding an axe and doing the hot man lean on top Holy of Holy cats. You're welcome. Um, here is him laying on bed sheets, strategically placed, obviously. Like, you know, um, this was a photo shoot for fuck's sake. Here, his hair looks darker and he's wearing like a dark denim jacket, maybe. Denim um, on denim. I could not find a photo of him wearing a <gasps> cowboy hat, but here's him in a bathing suit. It's not a speedo. It's like a normal bathing suit, maybe kind of short, yeah. but like regardless, all right. there is it's a okay. scene with him in a bathing suit because they go swimming. Um, and you know, just this hot ass photo shoot with him in just a plain white t-shirt. If anybody enjoys the um, actor Noah Wiley, which I do, oh yeah, uh, Leverage Redemption because he plays a large part in that. I could see it. Yeah. Um, anyway, hot as hell. Yeah, Um, like, super fucking hot. Yeah, like, why is he not in more things? Right. Might be the acting ability, we don't know. It could be. I've, again, not seen anything he's been in. So His biggest thing is a TV series called Baby Daddy. So we had the trailer for The Fall Guy again last night, which you and I saw when we saw The Iron Claw with right. Ryan Gosling, which I was like, I've never in my life found Ryan Gosling attractive until Barbie. I found him kind of attractive in Barbie. In The Fall Guy, he's so fucking hot. And I think it's because he's funny in it. I could see that. Because he's finally come into his, like, funny. Like, people are like... He could be a funny character. Like, he, you can give him funny roles and he'll be able to handle it. Yeah, I think definitely. I think he is an actor that can handle funny shit. I also think he works off of Emily Blunt really well in that. That seems to be. I don't sure. know. Obviously. If you we can't saw that, work that well off of Emily Blunt, I don't know what to tell you. Then you, you, right? Like, if you have no, I mean, like, the fucking Rock had, like, goddamn chemistry off of Emily Blunt. They had, like, crazy chemistry. And I'm like... Wow. Um, I also want to point out that... Jungle Cruise, totally. Watch it. I have only seen parts of it, but I would like to see it in its entirety. Um, Mama V really loves Jungle Cruise. Uh, Derek Thieler, also 6'5". Nice. Nice. Yep. Anywho. Let's move on to recommendaciones. Yes, please. Would you like to begin? Uh, I've got a whole bunch of them, so why don't you start? Okay, happy to. Um, So I, last week, or last episode rather, uh, mentioned that I was reading some Roxy Cohen. I finished Throw a Mirror Darkly. Very good. Very good. Um, And I had started this Tangled Web. I finished this Tangled Web. Also very good. Um, That is releasing... January 23rd, which I believe is the day that this episode is coming out. Um, I also started just today 
Um, one of my friends uh, has a couple pseudonyms. Roxy does as well. Um, this one is one of my friend's pseudonyms called Lilith Sloan. That's the mm -hmm. pen name. And the book is called Their Hybrid to Take. I am not apologizing for a single fucking thing here. Um, this is basically, she calls it alien smut, but it's really not. It's just sci-fi smut. Um, anyway, I started that. <laughs> I'm just going to drop that. I'm just going to drop I'm that just here. I'm going to drop that. Anyway, so you go ahead. You talk about what you're reading. All right. So first, I'm just going to say I've got three arcs that are coming up being published in the next week. So watch for our Insta and also our website because I will be posting both review, both the reviews, reviews both places, I should say. So the first is... Um, uh, which um, I have finished. I, I am I'm working on the other two. I have read Into the Bargain before, but I'm sure that Colleen has changed things around and, and updated stuff. So uh, from the short story that was in the uh, anthology, but uh, Into the Bargain by Colleen Cowley, which I just love her, her mm -hmm. stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I love the story. This story, it was one of my favorites from the anthology. So I'm very excited about it, um, about her, her whole... Um, her whole world of magic and how it's like modern, but not. And it's a little bit of like 1950s. And I, I love, okay. And the other person is um, the other book that's coming out is dance with the dragon Duke by SL Prater, um, which I love both of their concepts of the world, because it's like these, these worlds where the women are repressed, but they're the fucking ones who have the power. Like they mm. know they mm. have the power and the talent and the magic and you're just waiting for the revolution and yep. uh, viva resistance and it's going to happen um, Dance with the Dragon Duke I've just started and I cannot wait for fucking Glenn Freese to get his goddamn co-opence um, but I did finish on the care of the keeping of orcs because it's 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 it's, it's I believe that one is the 25th so um, that one is very sweet it is a um, second chance love uh, between a human uh, shifter and an orc and it is ho 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 hot as fuck the first the first sex scene whew, um, she's they're in a cave together like because they're traveling and she's trying to be very quiet but also you know do the number do 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 the do and as she finishes she realizes that he finishes too and he says next time we can do this together it is hot and there's a lot of um fan art that people have made of this and it is hot um Amazing. so yeah it is there's a lot of oh he loves her boobs he loves her boobs a lot and there's a lot of that in there. Nice. Um, but the book I want to talk about just for two seconds, because I teased about it the last time we chatted, is I was like, I'm just going to fucking read this book. And I read this book in a day. And that is Butcher and Blackbird. I know you've all <laughs> fucking seen the... It's like Saltburn. We've all goddamn seen the commercials for goddamn Saltburn. It's the same thing with Butcher and Blackbird. We've seen it. We know it's coming out, okay, guys? Um, but I read it, and I don't know how I feel about it. I, I feel, I'm on the <laughs> fence about it. I liked it. I liked it. Um, I, I'm not going to recommend it to everybody. Like, I would not sure. recommend this to Veronica. Because it is gory. It's really gory. It's But what I will say I about the audio Weaver... Book. Is she she does say at the beginning, if you don't like all of this stuff, this isn't the book for you. I mean, sure. literally, I'm gonna just tell you this so that way it's not as a deterrent, just to like be a warning. In the first fucking chapter, our um and I cannot remember her name right now. <laughs> the heroine is trapped in a fucking cage with a like a a rotting dead body to which explodes a bunch of maggots. That crawl like cert as she says is Orzo is coming towards her. Yeah, uh, I had Orzo it's, for dinner. Is, Please stop talking. 
Ah. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm telling you, and it's going to be worse if you're listening to it. Yeah, it's it's it is it is very graphic. So if you are a very like it, if I mean, it's graphic. So if you if you cannot handle, if you have a very very like uneasy stomach, it's not going to be the book for you. I promise you. You know, like wow. She and she and she's the one who says the trigger warning. So it's not just me, but I'm going to tell you, as somebody who has watched a lot of shit, has seen a lot of shit, has seen some stuff that like fucking grown men haven't been able to sit through. I will tell you that this is probably not the book for you. However, and I will also say that the sex scenes are very graphic. They're like extremely graphic and not in a bad way. Like they're like everyone, there's consent all around. But if you, we've talked about scooping things up and putting things back inside, that definitely happens. And like pegging is talked about and possibly in you know, like the, the butt is definitely breached in this one. I mean, and like there are things that happen that you're like wow that would never happen in a regular book writing wise it's fantastic like it's funny there are a lot of funny stuff in it it's amazing that it's like about serial killers (laughs) and you're like it's funny it's a it's serial killers who kill serial killers it's dexter yeah dexter is a book Everybody who's associated, like, the second book in this one is going to be about this woman who has some issues. Like, definitely some sexual assault issues. Um, and and it's the hero's brother. And he is a murder for hire. Like, he is, like, a, contra- a contract killer. So that's going to be the second book. Um, mm-hmm. I can't... And I know there's going to be a third book. I don't know who that's going to be. But... It's it's. I would say go with caution, go sure. with God, <laughs> go with caution. <laughs> like make sure you read your trigger warnings. I don't even say that because I think like her trigger warnings are good, but I don't know if you're ready for the amount of gore that's going to be in this book. Okay, like it's descriptive. Like someone gets beat to death, and it's very descriptive. Wow. Yeah. Um, There's this book no is animals. currently tw- number 25 on the new adult and college romance <laughs> charts. It doesn't surprise me. Like, like shits. I mean, there's cannibalism. There's unknow- un- un- unknowing cannibalism and knowing cannibalism. Here's the thing. I told you about this book. And you were like, I've, I've seen the commercials for it for... No, no, I saw the commercials for it every time I opened my goddamn fucking Instagram. Sure. Believe sure. me, I've known about this book. But you and I talked about it recently. We Last about episode. The show. Yeah, and That's I was like, I I'm downloading because fucking Joe Arden has an Irish accent. And then you were like, I don't know. And then literally the next day, you were like, so I started watching <laughs> the Blackbird. I started reading it, yeah. And I was like, and what? I you the said day. you didn't want to. But I knew if one of us had to take the fucking L for it, it was going to be me. That's okay. But, I mean, go for it. Try, I mean, like, I always say, don't ever, like, don't listen to me, like, with half of your ears. Like, don't sure. be mean, like, but I just want to, I don't want you all to think, because it is a, it's a cute, like, little, you know, commercial when you see it on Instagram. It's rough, guys. Like, it's rough. So I just want to put that out there, that it's, 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 but... If you think you can handle it, even if you can't, like, I mean, I want this lady to get money because I think it's a good book and I think she's a good writer and I think it's something different. But at the same time, just if it's you mind think your that what I just said, if I what I just told you is going to make you want to throw up, it's probably not the book for you. Yeah. Yeah. Fair Eye enough. sockets play a big pl- part in this, too. Oh, Christ. Okay. She's called the Orb Weaver for a reason. Oh, God. All right. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Boston Butcher. All right. Let's talk about what we're listening to. Go for it. Um, For better or worse. So if you know anything about me, IRL, um, you know that I am a massive Friends fan. 
I have loved the show no. since it started. I know it's shocking for everyone. I know. Um, understanding that you know some shows age well and some shows don't. Um, however, I when Matthew Perry released his book Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, I wanted to read it and just you know you know how TBRs go, right? Just an endless number. Um, however, then on Halloween or around then, he passed away. And um, I immediately downloaded the book on Audible because I wanted to hear him actually read it. Yeah. Um, fuck, dude. This this book is hard. It's hard to listen to. It's hard to hear him recount his life events. Um, because a lot of it was rough. A lot of it is rough. He he talks about. I couldn't about, get over how much fucking like Percocet he was taking. When he talks about, he should like, have his, been dead years ago. Actually, that's one of the first lines of the book. Is um, my name is Matthew Perry, my friends call me Maddie, and I should be dead. That's one of the first lines of the book. Yeah. And, you know, reading it, like, this book was released in 2022, and he died in 2023. So, like, having him posthumously, essentially, read this book is painful on, like, a different level, because he, he actually yeah. is dead now. Um, he talks about, like, the number of times that his life was saved, and all of the rehabs he's been in. Um at any rate, um, it's really fascinating. I actually think, like, this is a book I told my mom. Like, I think you would actually really think this book is fascinating um, because she did tons of work with, you know, alcohol, like, alcoholism and drug addicts. And mm -hmm. it would be really fascinating for her. Um, but it's also really hard to listen to. Um, yeah. Knowing how it ends up. Yes. I will say, though, um, one of the floated names that they had talked about being, like, the, the titles of this book, instead of Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, one of the titles that they had floated was Unaccompanied Minor. And they talk about, he talks a lot about, like, being unaccompanied, being alone. Um, one, the, the book actually starts off with this story, um about him being five years old five years old in the 70s because he came from like hollywood right like his parents were hollywood people right his dad yes his mom yeah. was a canadian beauty queen and um he his parents split up when he was like less than a year old and then his mom stayed his mom moved back to montreal just to, to be with her family essentially and um his dad went back to L.A. And he didn't really see his dad much for like the first four or five years of his life. And then when he was five years old, his uh, parents put him on a flight alone in the 70s, like <gasps> 1974, to go visit his dad in L.A. And that's <gasps> how the book opens. It's like him flying by himself, like with a sign, like unaccompanied minor on his on his body. I forget they did that shit back then. They used Jesus to do Christ. that shit. Right, exactly. But the thing that, like, honestly, and he talks about, he clearly talks about this in the book, but he's like, I was a colicky baby. I cried all the time. And if if you've ever had a baby that will just keep crying and you have no idea how to stop it, like, it, that is a desperate time. And this was 1969 when he was born and he went to his parents took him to the doctor and the pediatrician was like, here is some phenobarbital. Give this to your baby, to your 60 day old baby. And so they gave him phenobarbital and he's like, there is obviously no way to know if that has contributed to all of my problems. But that happened, like, when I was two, less, like, between 30 and 60 days old, which is, like, a really critical part of, like, brain development in infants. And yeah. So, at any rate, um, 
it's really fascinating. I think it's really interesting to hear him talk about like addiction and the differences between like enjoying partying and addiction. Um, the part yeah. where I'm at right now, he talks, he's talking about like his friendship with Bruce Willis during the whole nine yards. And mm-hmm. um, he talks about like Bruce Willis being able to party and then show up on set and nail everything and go home. And he's like, but Bruce Willis was a partier and I was an addict. And it was yeah. not this, it's not the same thing. And it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's also, I think, really eye opening to understand like he talks about it like this is a disease. This is, this was in my brain from the very beginning. Um, yeah. But also, like, he talks about having, and in Britney Spears' memoir, too, like, she talks about drinking with her mom when she was 12 and 13 years old. And Matthew Perry was drinking with his friends when he was, like, 12, 13 years old. I would say, to tack on to that is, oh, no, we've talked about this, is the Smart List podcast, especially the episodes with RDJ, Robert Downey, because Mm -hmm. he and Jason Bateman talking about, like, how their lives, like... It's so different. It's so different. Like, we can't even imagine what these young men, young young women went through when, like, living with, living in this, in the shadow of their parents that were, like, Los Angeles royalty. And yeah. the drugs, the drugs that were paraded in at a young age. I mean, Drew Barrymore, and there's another one yes. who was, like... I don't know if she's ever been on Smart List, but, like, yeah, I mean, like, they will, they talk about, like, how it is very different. It is not... And it's in how, like, you just can't just not, like, you can't cut it back. It's either none or nothing. Like, I mean, it's just, it, that's, like, it's none or, like, you're just a fucking addict. Like, that's, it's, it, you can't cut it. Yeah, he talks about, um, in 2001, um, during Friends, I mean, he, mm-hmm. they rearranged his friend's shooting schedule because he was in horrible shape. And um, that's when he was real thin. He has said that when he, if he's watching Friends episodes, he can tell exactly what he was on at the time. So if he was really thin, he was on pills. And if he was chubby, he was drinking. Um, mm-hmm. He said that um, at the end of season five, I think, like, you know, when you can see the difference, like at the end of season five, when. Chandler and Monica are thick as shit. I don't remember. Um, but 2001, he ended up going to rehab because every, I mean, even like they had an intervention on the set of Friends where they were like, we know what's going on. Like, we need you to get cleaned up. We need you to like care. And uh, he went to rehab and initially they were like, okay, 30 day rehab, detox, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, mm, he is hardcore. This man will not detox and be okay in 30 days. They kept him for like right. 60 or 90 days or something like that to something, like get like, him yeah, sober. Because like they're trying to think of how they were going to fix like schedule like with, with shooting. Yes. Um, yeah. He did get sober and he was sober for like a couple of years. Um, it was sad to hear him talk about it. Um. Because what happens when you're the next show you're on tanks? So he um, ended up, he talks about like the moment. He says, when you're sober, there is like a membrane between you being sober and you giving into the addiction. And when you, per, when you, what's that word I'm looking for? When you, puncture puncture the membrane it's like a floodgate and uh he talks about he had broken up with someone who would he was like something i understand on a level i wish i didn't is just this desire to like not be abandoned to not be left and so he if he felt like someone was getting too close to him or was developing actual feelings for him, then he would break up with them. And if there was someone who was emotionally unavailable, he was like all in on that person. Yeah. Um, 
So one of his, like, lady friends, uh, he was trying to break up with them, with her, and she just was, like, I, going into a spiral. And he went to her hotel room to, like, talk to her. And she, like, locked herself in the bathroom, was screaming. And there was, he said there was a bottle of Vicodin that was knocked over on her nightstand. And I picked up all three of the pills that were laying on the nightstand and I took them and and negated two years of sobriety. Mm. And he talked about like that membrane of just like puncturing that membrane and just opening the floodgates. Because at that point, like yeah. it's it's all or nothing. Like you start and then you cannot stop. And it yeah. was so fucking sad to listen to. Like, but it's fascinating i think it's really under i think it's important for all of us to understand like it is i mean this is a disease like addiction is a disease yep yeah um substance abuse is a disease yep yes um he was also really good friends with river phoenix he filmed a movie Mm. with river phoenix and he talks about like the day that um that I think it was this day that River Phoenix died. He punched a hole in Jennifer Aniston's uh, like dressing room wall because he found out like while he was on set and just like was so upset and just like punched a wall and he was just with Jennifer at the time. Um, it's just really fascinating um, mm. and, and and sad. It, it's heavy. Um, but it's really interesting and I do think it's important and I think you know when he was doing press for this book he talked about um, people would say like you know what do you want your legacy to be and he said you know people will say it's friends and I understand that but what I wish people would talk about is the work that I have done to try and help other people get sober and he has done a lot of work toward that Um mm-hmm. So, you know, I think if if you're going to listen to it, it's it's definitely interesting. He's done a lot of really fascinating things, but I think that it's most important to listen to it from like the standpoint of understanding the addiction involved and um and the work that can be done to to try and help people. Anyway, that was heavy. Not at all about romance novels. Um, Ray, what have you been listening to? Well, so kind of going on a romance novels. Um, okay. I have been obsessed with this fucking channel on YouTube called Catfished. Not Catfished, not MTV's Catfish. Get the okay. fuck out of here. Gotcha. This is Catfish. This is social catfish. Um, sometimes the episodes are called Scamfish, but it is mostly romance scams. And it is um, all of these mostly um, old people. Mostly, some are like middle-aged women and men who um, get romance scammed by people. And I would say, we, most of our listeners probably know this, so it's not like we're preaching to the choir. I would say, I would suggest that you maybe suggest this channel to your relatives, your mom, your aunt. Your, you know, single whatever, because that's who they these that who these romance scammers um, target are, sure. el, you know, older single mm-hmm. women, not even single. Like, here's what I so here's the other thing that I found out. Like, <laughs> our friend Ween was like, "Oh, that's so sad." I'm like, "Okay, hold on, it's really not that sad," because one, most of the quote unquote victims will leave their significant other, if they have it, in a heartbeat for whoever, may, may it be Johnny Depp, because for a large number of these people, are all scammed by quote-unquote Johnny Depp, hey. or or Darius Rucker of Hootie the Blowfish, or Chris Brown, or whoever, and you're like, you're, you're not dating that person. You can't but possibly they will, think you're dating that person. So this one woman today that I was actually like, or no, it was yesterday. I was cooking. I was making cookies and I was watching and she, uh, there's a person named uh, Struggle Jenkins. I don't know who this person is, but he's like a rapper, I guess. And she thought 
she was dating or she was seeing, quote unquote, talking with Struggle Jenkins. And um, she was going to leave her fiance of 20, like she, they had been fiance t- together for three years, but they made together t- like 20 years or something like that. And she was going to leave him for this person she met online who she'd given like thousands of dollars to. No. And at the end of the episode, they brought on this struggle Jenkins. He's like, I've not been talking to you. I remember your boyfriend, your fiance, because he, he hired me to do the cameo for you. Because he did a cameo to, 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 um, you know, for for the engagement, whatever. It's dumb. Um, But the fact it was like, I would say if you have, if you have, especially if there's like, they, they tend to go after people who have just been recently widowed, recently divorced, but mostly recently widowed. Aye. But, um, here's the other thing I don't feel bad about. And again, I don't like to get, we don't like to get political about this podcast, but most of these people were probably at January 6th. So <laughs> let's not worry about them too much. But like, um, most of these people, like, I watched one old man who was definitely, definitely wanting this woman who was 50 years younger than him nope. for sex. Nope. And literally said to her, like, you can't come see me on these dates because you'll be on your period because I've been tracking it. Oh, yep. come on. So I didn't feel too bad when he got so much money stolen from him. Yep. Um, And also he made some, some definitely horrible racist Asian comments about right. her too. So, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes you like, is this the line between victim and go ahead, scam them is uh, pretty like, it's, there have been people on this show that I'm like, Oh my God, please call someone call the police because these people are uh, gross. Uh, um, but uh, I would say, though, like, for ge- just general, like, if you have a loved one who is up there in age, or not even that, just, like, doesn't know about technology, I yeah. would say please. Or just, you think, might be gullible enough to be scammed. Well, it's because there's, like, younger like, people. Really, they're convincing. These ones aren't. Like, okay. <laughs> any person, any person who, like, no, like, once they start asking you, like, any of these people who are, like, um, this one woman divorced her husband, left her baby because Billy from Stranger Things no. wanted to be with her. I started no. asking for money. I'm like, Billy oh, from Stranger Things, Dacre Montgomery, um, is asking you for money. Dacre Montgomery, who has, I would assume, enough money, but has been asking you for plane tickets and all nope. this stuff. Like... Like, those are the kind of things where you're like, guys, like, like the woman who, like, who thought she was dating Darius Rucker. I'm like, nope. okay. Darius Rucker is doing He's okay. touring. He's doing just fine. Hootie and the Blowfish is still touring. He's doing just fine. He yep. doesn't need your money. Nope. So, I mean, like, one woman gave, oh, this one blew my mind. She was a backup singer for Fleetwood Mac. She lived with fucking um, uh, 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 Stevie Nicks for 10 years. Oh, she had, uh, she was married for 20 years. Her husband gave, like, he passed away, left her all of his money. He has two grown children. She gave all of that money to a scammer because he, in the whole th- whole story, you feel start feeling bad for her. He was going to send, he sent her pictures of this red, red, red um, safe that had $700 million in gold bars in it. Oh, hell. Okay. She was paying for it to be shipped in, to be moved, no. and then you're like, oh, you're feeling bad for her, and then, like all the money she's given, and then at the end she's like, but, and also, he, he has two grown children that, but he gave me all the money. He gave everything to me. He never even gave the money to his kids. So she just gave away all of their inheritance also. Hmm. So what I'm saying is please just watch it for your own entertainment and then be like, hey, you're not talking to fucking Chris Brown. And why would you want to be anyhow? But 
you're not talking to Darius Rucker. You're not talking to fucking Johnny Depp. Like 14 people on this fucking thing has been thinking we're talking to Johnny Depp. They're you're not. not. You're not. You you've just given the scammer from Lagos fifty thousand dollars. You you no longer have a house. Oh. I stopped actually like I today I actually stopped watching because I was like this is so de- fucking depressing. It's the yeah. same story over and over again. Somebody's given somebody two hundred thousand dollars and you're like you're fucking stupid. Like and most of these women these people the one I watched in particular was like oh I watch your show all the time. How can these people be so stupid? Well let me tell you how I'm so su- fucking stupid. Like uh, okay you just you gave somebody like your life savings. I'm I'm how sad. are you any better? It is, but then you think about these people. Also, the other thing is, most of the women are in their 70s. And they're getting, like, they're getting messaged by these handsome men in their 30s. And you're like, no. 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 I mean, I don't want to be the, the, the asshole here. A-I-T-A. But... I'm gonna be because Mir, who's who's who is contacting you? Come on, like I, I'm 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 gonna tell you right now. If somebody if somebody like looked like Dacre Montgomery was messaging me, I'd be like, that's a fucking scam, bitch. It's a scam. <laughs> <laughs> nope, oh nope, God. nope. Like I'm smart enough to know my dumb ass, my ugly ass is not <laughs> getting like fucking like you know no no. So I think a lot of it's narcissism did too. You just because call yourself ugly. I did. So there, there was one woman who was <sighs> like, "I look." She's later. like, "I'm 79 years old. I look like I'm 50." And people tell me I look like 59. I'm like, "Baby, you look like you're 83." No, 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 no. She also got scammed ten times. Ten, ten times. Ten. They're actually like somebody was talking like the the kids were talking about a con- conservatorship. Because they're like, oh, we can't. Geez. This is just... Yeah. Um, so, there's that fun thing where you're like, come on. Oh, so, yeah, Catfish. It's great. And they, 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 it's all free. Like, they do this for people. If you if you have a, an issue... I mean, it's better than... like Because MTV's Catfish is all fucking staged and it's bullshit. This is like people who are like really losing money and like having like... Ish, like catfish is like it's like they know that each party knows that they're being catfished and it's a bunch of bullshit and most of it is staged and it's just made this is like people who have some serious problems and i mean i'm gonna send it to my relatives and be like please watch this so you're like right you're aware you're more prepared right yeah yikes my god yep yep the, the the amount of people that think they're dating Johnny Depp blows my mind though. One woman thought that like the person that was scamming her was possibly Amber Heard. I was oh, like, oh. uh huh, uh huh. Okay, darling, what do we have coming up next? <clears throat> okay, I would love to talk to you about that. Um, coming up next on our list. Um, we have, we actually have an interview with an author. Um, Mm -hmm. technically it's an ARC for us. Um, but our episode will be coming out on the day that the book releases. So Mm -hmm. we will be interviewing, oh, I'm going to say this wrong. Zao Axelrod? Uh, it's spelled X-I-O. Axelrod. We'll be reading Girls with Bad Reputations. This is book two in the Lily series. Um, I'm super excited. Um, she is a best-selling author. Um, she grew up in the music industry and began recording at a young age. I'm super excited. Um, Did you say Geo? No, I said Zhao. Is it Geo? It's Geo. Geo. Okay, excellent. Um, Teal. Tio or Gio. Yeah. Don't Sorry. fuck that I'm up. Listening when to you the pronunciation. Talk to her in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, yeah. So that's what's coming up. Um, we will also have another special episode in 
February. And then we will have another one that you and I have been excited about for like a while. We just chose the book, but we've been wanting to read this author for a bit. So, yeah. Do you want me to say what these things are? No, we can hold off. Okay, we can make cool. it like. Sounds good. I'm sorry I did not even mean to interrupt with you with the pronunciations. It was just in my ear at no, the time. No, please. Like, I'm glad you did. I didn't fucking say it, right? Um, um, we're on a bunch of different shit. So we are. Um, you can find us lots yeah. of places, including like, you know, TikTok and Threadless and Pinterest and Blue Sky and Instagram and all those things. Um, our, our Patreon's on here. Yes, our Patreon is on here. It is up and running. Um, We'd also really, if you're listening, if you're listening to podcasts on Spotify, please follow us on Spotify. It really helps us Mm -hmm. with sponsors. Um, If you really enjoy this and you want to um, become a Patreon, love that. Love that story. Um, If you would like to just tell us about something or talk to us about a book that you read, um, you can email us at chickletbookclubpodcast at gmail.com. You know, we're always around. We love listening to constructive criticism. Um, if you don't like our voices, have, you don't have to listen to this podcast. You can fucking so. get bet. So, um, <laughs> um, if you want more reviews, which will be coming all your mm-hmm. face, um, in on uh, YouTube, so we we might have a Barbie commentary, maybe, we may or may not, um. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but we have some movies coming up that we are excited to be uh, reviewing, and those will be up on all the reviews will be up on our YouTube. So if there's a movie that we want to talk about, it'll be on our YouTube, but it will be related to romance of some sort. We're not going to have just a random fucking movie up there. Um, sure. Unless, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't talked about it. We, we're also talking about at some point doing a um, possibly a practical magic commentary or review. Oh, my God. Um, uh, but that might be on the Patreon, so that might be a Patreon fucking goal. Yeah. Um, but check out our YouTube, and also like and subscribe there, too. So, there you go. Please do. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, mm-hmm. Ray? Yeah. How do we end this thing? In the most annoying way possible. I've never done that. I usually <gasps> ask you. Really? Oh my god. Okay. Yes. Okay. <gasps> Bye. Bye. I'm so tired. I'm me too. It's. it's